And good afternoon to you. It is a Friday. Here we go. The Tom Taylor Sports Show on this Friday. Again, we're looking at April the 10th. And, oh, well, we're wrapping up our 45th day together here in our fun and frolic. And we thank you for being with us. And it's an action-packed day today. This will be a fast two hours. I can tell you it's going to fly by. We have lots to talk about. A lot of folks talk, too. And so we'll do that coming up here in a few minutes. As we always do, we dedicate our show unashamedly to the man who hung up on the cross. Again, on the webcam right behind me here up on the wall of the cross. And, again, the verse of the day, Romans 8, 27 and 28. Love me, and I will see to it that all things work together for your good. For I know the mind of my spirit. I am constantly interceding for you according to my will. I like that first part. Love me, and I will see to it that all things work together for your good. For I know the mind of my spirit. And I am constantly interceding for you according to my will. And that's that's good right there. Romans 8, 27 and 28. And our show, of course, brought to you by Bracket Asphalt Maintenance, Wells Fargo Financial Network, Bays Mountain Park, Max Medicine Mart, Cherokee Barbershop, Bristol Motor Speedway, the American Import Auto Repair Gang in Johnson City, Jim Klein Farmers Insurance, Book Lovers Warehouse, Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics, and by Larry Kaiser, Nationwide Insurance. So lots going on. And we'll start with the young man last night. By the way, good afternoon, horse. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. It's yes. Friday. It's Friday. It's the weekend. You got it. And it's going to be a big weekend sports-wise for a lot of reasons. And, hey, we start last night. Young man went out there in 42-degree weather, short sleeves, and was a <laughs> champion. He was a stud, I'm got telling you. Got his first oh, win. Oh, man. Daniel Norris, former Science Hill star, again getting his first Major League win in the win over the Yankees in New York. Went five and two-thirds, allowing six hits, three runs, two walks, five strikeouts. And, of course, they, everybody wanted to talk about the home run A-Rod hit off of him, but that's okay. It was a no-doubter. It was a hammer. And way back up in the stands. But he kept his composure, gave up a couple of home runs, and, again, came back and finished strong, got the final out. Kind of ran out of gas there in the bottom of the sixth inning. But, again, got into the sixth inning and Major League start at 21 years old. That's pretty strong in the, you know, famed Yankee Stadium. And what a place to start. Yep. What a slice of American history, a Yankee Stadium. So Daniel Norris picks up the win. Uh, the Blue Jays sweep the Yankees. They move on to weekend series in Baltimore. And, again, you take away two pitches, and Norris was simply outstanding. He was really very good. So good news and great news for Dino. So uh, we're going to be on top of the – keep you on top of the Masters. It's happening as we speak down in Augusta, Georgia. Let's run down baseball last night. We were talking about Daniel Norris in the American League, Detroit beat Minnesota. Kansas City over Chicago, Cleveland beat Houston, Texas over Oakland, and Boston beat Philadelphia now. Everybody changes for the first new series of the new season after opening day series. Toronto, as we said, in Baltimore. Houston at Texas. Detroit will be in Cleveland. White Sox hosting Minnesota. Boston will be in New York to battle the Yankees. Tampa Bay and Miami. The Angels in Kansas City. And Seattle and Oakland. In the National League, Red Legs go 3-0 out of the gate. They beat Pittsburgh and swept the Buccos 3-2. Mets over Washington 6-3. San Francisco defeated San Diego 1-0. Again, we told you Boston beat Philadelphia, Philadelphia today. Cubbies will be in Colorado. The Nationals in Philadelphia. Tampa Bay in Miami. Atlanta back home after going 3-0 in Miami. will be hosting the Mets. Pittsburgh moves on to open up a series in Milwaukee. The Dodgers at Arizona and San Diego hosting San Francisco. And the Red Legs, Jason Marquis on the mound for Cincinnati in Great American Ball. Oh, this is the lunch bet. The Cardinals are coming to town. That's right. Lackey for the Cardinals and Marquis for Cincinnati. I said the Cardinals will sweep them. Because I, yeah, the Red, I said, I said the, the Reds mm, will take the series. Yeah. I didn't say they'd sweep them, but I said they'll you win did. the series. So I say sweep. You say they'll win two sweep or a combination thereof, you win lunch. So. And this, is, and this is a Cracker Barrel lunch? I guess so. Yeah, it was Cracker Barrel lunch. So, uh, yep, that's what we got going on today or tonight. So, when hey, when the Cardinals come off the bus or off the plane, I guess off the bus, uh, the Reds just shudder. For whatever reason, it's a mind thing. And so yep. uh, the Cardinals opened up big three-game set this weekend, two nights, as a matter of fact, Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati. So we'll know more about that coming up on Monday. Of course, NASCAR getting ready to crank it up. Uh, tonight they'll run the Xfinity Series race at Texas Motor Speedway and come back tomorrow night for the uh, Duck Commander 500. They'll run it on Saturday night in Texas, and uh, it's uh, going to be a lot of fun down there. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on in the show. Speaking of NASCAR, big news today from Bristol Motor Speedway. Food City 500 has changed its name for the race. 
In recognition of longtime NASCAR broadcaster Steve Burns' courageous and ongoing battle with neck and brain cancer, uh, or head and neck cancer, I should say, Food City, Fox Sports, and BMS have shown their support by naming the race next Sunday of the Food City 500 in support of Steve Burns and Stand Up to Cancer. So now the race is called the Food City 500 in support of Steve Burns and Stand Up to Cancer is the name of the race. Uh, Burns, a NASCAR television mainstay for more than 25 years, continues to inspire and uplift others even while he's waging his own war against head and neck cancer. In fact, he's in ICU as we speak. And so Steve Burns, they're going to name their, again the race the Food City 500 in support of Steve Burns and Stand Up to Cancer. So I thought that was a very, very nice gesture from Steve Smith from Food City and certainly Jerry Caldwell, BMS, and the folks at Fox Sports. So pretty, uh, that's pretty classy right there. That is. Food City 500 in support of Steve Burns and Stand Up to Cancer. The only other time I know they've changed the name of the race was in honor of the late Jeff Bird. They called it the Jeff Bird 500 a couple of years ago. So it has been changed again to honor the, uh, as we speak, fighting Steve Burns. Again, he's in ICU and having a tough time apparently. And so, again, one more time, Food City 500 in support of Steve Burns and Stand Up to Cancer. And that will be the name of the race for next Sunday. Do you have, have you done your homework anymore? Uh, we, I'm sitting there for whatever reason. I'll cap it. I don't know why. The deep fried Rocky Mountain oysters. No, no, I didn't get a chance to do it last and night. And the boomsticks. So uh, I'll, I'll do Monday. some more here. I'll look. I'll, maybe during the show, if we get some time, I'll keep looking. By the way, we, thank you. we got the quiz show today. <laughs> and our quiz show, my boy Horace in the hot seat, baseball, 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 <laughs> football, and golf. <laughs> so there you go. Now. That won't move, I can promise you. That eight up there is not going to – and your one goes to two ain't going to happen, I promise you. So, all that snickering all week long, and I bombed it, especially on Wednesday when I went two but I don't, five. Hey, but I haven't gloated that I'm going to go five for five. I just do my job. I sit here. I take my licks, and I go on. You over there, on the other hand, you sit there, I'm going five for five. Take it to the bank. Take it Take to, to the, the bank. And what you happens? You ain't going five for five. I moved it. No, not this week you didn't. I did, too. I moved when? it on Monday. I went okay, five well, for five. You, I, I went let, five let for me, five. Let me bring you back to Wednesday. Wednesday don't count. We oh, think oh, positive. Oh, too. That's the day you said, I'm taking it to the bank. I'm going five for five. There's no way I'm going to miss out on these questions. You have that on tape anywhere where you can back that up? Oh, it's, yeah. It's on live stream. <laughs> it's, it's on our, yeah, Tuesday, baby. We'll go back and review it. All right. Two for five. You're right. I bombed that Elvis thing. You said it even Wednesday morning. Yes, I did. I'm going to go five for five. You're right. But now, no, I'm I don't go go, here, but I don't minute. sit here and go. I'm going to go on record and say, baby, I'm jacked up. He is not going to go five for five. Coming up in about 20 minutes. Ain't going to happen. That eight's going to stay eight, and that one's going to stay one beside his name. So, we'll say, yes, you do. You you, you, just, All right. you show up and just do your thing. I know. Yeah. But I gloat. Yeah. But when I don't do well, who leads the parade in giggling and chatter? I do. Bingo. It's, there you go. It's wonderful. There you go. You love it. So. You think everything's stupid <laughs> when, you well, don't, stupid. when you don't win. <laughs> it is stupid. Yeah, every time. I saw Richard Isaacs today. Went over to visit you? Richard, and, and uh, he likes it because when I miss him, he says, you know, every question, I said, every question's stupid. If I don't get it right, it's stupid. <laughs> so I love that. It's great. So, so, Apester, don't take it personal. Nobody should because they're all stupid when I don't get them yeah. right. Coming up later in the show, Michael White's going to join us from East Tennessee State University. The big blue goal game tomorrow, 2 o'clock at Kermit Tipton Stadium in Johnson City to wrap up spring practice for the Buccaneers of Carl Torbush. And we'll talk to Michael White coming up here in uh, the next half hour. Also, Josh Kite joins us at 2 o'clock. Josh Kite, the athletic director at Crockett. Big announcement last night involving middle school football in Washington County uh, here in northeast Tennessee. So we'll talk to Josh about that. Going to kind of pare down the teams and make it more, I think it's a great move, and it's a chance to make it more, I guess the word is more fair, uh, to put more kids with their age and their mm-hmm. weight and their and their height together so there's more, they don't, kids don't want to get creamed. And then, you know, when you got to get beat up all the time, you kind of lose interest in wanting to play. And so we'll talk to Josh about that coming up at the top of the hour. But also next hour, Hank Brown joins us, bigger running event tomorrow, the Bristol Half and Half in Bristol with WeRunEvents.com. And then we also have scheduled to be with us, our buddy Bob from Book Lovers Warehouse in Johnson City. So, now, NASCAR news. We mentioned the change of the name of the race for next Sunday. Richard, this out of the Kingsport Times News, Richard Childers Racing will present its appeal next week. A penalties levied by NASCAR against Ryan Newman's team for allegedly manipulating tires. Richard Childers said the appeal is scheduled for next Thursday, which means they'll be here in Bristol at 
for the uh, weekend racing next week. NASCAR has said tires taken from Newman after the race in California failed in an independent inspection have been altered to intentionally release air pressure during the race to give him an advantage. Newman and Carmen Childress were docked 75 points each. They're going to appeal that, and so that appeal process will be happening next week. And what do you think? You think he's guilty? You think, what do you think is going to happen to Richard Childress Racing? Now, currently, they got Newman who went from 6th to 27th in points because they knocked him and docked him 75 points. So justified, or you think he, these guys are innocent until proven guilty and they should be allowed to race and not lose the points? Well, obviously, there's probably not not as much evidence there as, as they once thought. So otherwise, um, uh, I don't think things would stand where they are. But I think it's going to be – I don't think anything else change. I think it'll just stay where it is. They'll lose their points, but they won't be, you know, he, the money issue will go away. Think it will? Yeah. All right. We'll see. Uh, Richard Childress racing again, losing uh, 75 points, and so did Ryan Newman, and they'll do that again coming up, as we said, next week at uh, during Bristol Motor Speedway Race Week. Now, heading into Texas racing this week, here's your top ten in points. First off of the Xfinity Series, Again, Ty Dillon on top of the leaderboard, then Chris Buescher five points back, Chase Elliott, the defending points champ, in third, Ryan Reed fourth, Darrell Wallace Jr. sixth, Brandon Gone sixth, I'm sorry, Wallace was fifth, Gone was sixth, then comes Regan Smith, Elliott Sadler, David Starr, and Brian Scott are the top ten in the Xfinity Series, again, racing tonight, as a matter of fact, qualifying later today and racing tonight in Texas, and then for tomorrow night, for the Duck Commander 500, you have the top ten in points heading into that race will be Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano, Martin Truex Jr., Case or uh, Brad Keselowski, Casey Kane. Then you have I'm going to put Ryan Newman there because he's still there. Well, no, they docked him, so he can't. He's not sixth right now until they reinstate him. So then you jump over him and go Paul Menard, Denny Hamlin, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Eric Amarola. The top ten in points when they qualify uh, tonight and roll off tomorrow night for the. Uh, Duck Commander 500 in the Xfinity Series racing tonight in Texas. So, uh, lots going on. What's the latest on the Masters? Masters uh, on your leaderboard, uh, jo- Jordan Spieth. There you go, Gator. Did I say it right? Spieth. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's so far he shot a four under today. He's on the twelfth uh, twelfth hole, um, and he's twelve under twelve under par. Uh, next closest to him is five strokes back. That's Charlie Hoffman at seven under. Uh, Ernie Els is five under. Jason Day. Uh, he's four under, and Justin Rose is four under. Those are your top uh, five right there. Some notables, uh, let's see here. Phil Mickelson, uh, he has yet to tee off, but he's still at two under. Sergio Garcia, your man. I like him. Right? Uh, he's had a bad day so far. He's, okay, he's on seven holes, and he's <laughs> three over. So he's dropped back down to one under. He was four under to start the day. Uh, Roy McElroy is yet to tee off. He's still one under. Um, Bubba Watson, he's one under. Uh, he's even so far today, but he's just teed off. Tiger Woods is through nine holes. He's two under for the day, so he's back from uh, one over to one under. But he's still uh, 11 strokes back. So uh, long way to go yet, but there you go. There you go. Long way to go. Not even the halfway point of the Masters. In Texas right now, they start a NASCAR Sprint Cup Series practice at 11.30 this morning. We're going to take a break, come back out for the final round at 2 o'clock today. Xfinity Series Coors Light Pole qualifying at 4.30 this afternoon. Then at 6.30, the Spring Cup Series, who's going to have the pole for this year's running of the Duck Commander 500? Of course, Joey Logano won the race last year. That'll be at 6.30 tonight. And then the Xfinity Series race will be at Texas Motor Speedway tonight under the lights at 8.30. So uh, that's what's going on. And a couple of notables and car changes. Carl Edwards driving for Stanley Racing this week instead of the Aris Toyota. So it's Stanley Racing for a Miracle Toyota. And then Danica's got a new color, a new sponsor, Tax Cut, this weekend. She had the same uh, same sponsor. Uh, go to Eddie.com, step to sign, let Tax Cut uh, be on top of her car for the Martinsville race. And so I guess because she did well, they said, let's roll the dice, come back again because yeah. it was her best finish. So uh, anyway, and also Kyle Larson will be in the Axe AXE Chevrolet this weekend at Texas. So a couple of different paint schemes. Again, Carl Edwards, the Stanley Racing, Stanley Tool Racing, Racing for a Miracle Toyota, and the number 19 for Joe Gibbs Racing. But, again, they'll go back out on the track here in a few minutes for the final practice of the Sprint Cup Series, getting ready for qualifying tonight. Again, the Xfinity Series, one more time at 4.30 they qualify. Coors Light Pole qualifying. 
6.30, the cup drivers qualify for tomorrow night's race. And then at 8.30 tonight, the Xfinity guys come back and actually race and drop the green flag and race it at 8.30 this evening at Texas Motor Speedway. Of course, tomorrow night, the cup race, and then everybody shifts gears, gets ready to come to Bristol to actually get an extra day because they won't be racing on Sunday in Texas. They'll be head back, uh, heading back to their garages, most of them in around Charlotte, and reloading and bringing the yeah. car haulers car haulers coming this way for next weekend's big racing action. Hard to believe a week from today is Bush Beans Pole Day at Bristol Motor Speedway. It's going to be a Bush Beans Pole Day. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Now, before we go to the break, college basketball. Woo! They're jumping off ship. Seven Kentucky, a couple of stars of Duke going early. A record seven players leaving a mighty Kentucky team after a season they fell two wins short of a championship. Again, seven footers Willie Colley Stein, Dakari Johnson, twin guards Andrew and Aaron Harrison, freshman forward Carl Anthony Towns, and Trey Lyles, and freshman backup guard Devin Booker. De- they just made a mockery of college basketball. Yeah. I'm seven sorry. of them just stood up and walked yeah. away. I, yeah, but they threw the money in their face and they went for it, which is fine. I mean, I, but they made a mockery of college basketball because of the way the system's set up. And I'm sorry. I just, you know. That, seven guys. That, that's not to say Kentucky's not got seven more in the wings to take their place. Mm-hmm. All right. But, you know, next year they'll be in the same boat. Yeah. You know, some more will take off and jump. And uh, it's just a mockery. I'm not, it's, it's, it's sad. You know, it's not about education anymore. It's about making money. Confirmation was more visual than verbal with Calipari asking those who were leaving to stand up. They're all sitting up there at the table, and after it's almost like uh, what used to be the game show, What's My Line? Yeah. And they'd say, with the real Tom Taylor, please stand up. Well, after they all looked at each other and hesitated, they stood up to applause before answering questions on the podium and then answering separately. Why would you applaud them? Why would you well, applaud them the to leave? The media is the one in there applauding. Yeah. There's why are you applauding? There. Yeah. Why are you applauding the fact you're leaving school? Uh, but that's, yeah, that's, seven of them. Again, that's a mockery. Seven guys off that yeah. team stood up and said, I'm leaving early. Now, you know, I'm not – I don't guess I'm the greatest judge of talent. I've watched some basketball and played it my day, but I can't – I just don't think all seven of these guys are going to make it in the NBA. No. Or, or not to the level they want to. Now, yeah. they're saying Towns could be the first player chosen on the draft on June 25th. But, again, here I go on my soapbox. NBA, I mean, they need to be taken to the woodshed because they're the reason this has happened. And what, what does this tell you about – the NCAA National Championship. It's a joke. These, yeah, these guys don't want to even come back and try to win no, that. No, they won't come back and try they to They don't again. care about the ring. They no, don't care. No, they want to go make the money. Show so, me the money. Yeah. So there you go. They're gone. Also, no surprise, no suspense from Jaheel Okafor. Duke freshman gone, six foot eleven, announcing his decision, decision, saying he will fulfill one of his earliest childhood dreams. He's out. He's going to the NBA. So there's another marquee name gone. So there's eight. Uh, the guys are in the final four, four. that are leaving. Uh, basketball coaching notes, Bobby Hurley, after a two-year stint at Buffalo, has been hired as the new men's basketball coach at Arizona State. Again, 43-year-old Hurley turned the Bulls into a winner in a short time up in Buffalo. And so, in fact, after he lost to West Virginia in the round of 64, the school gave him a contract extension, became the first coach in school history to win more than 40 games in his first two seasons. But, again, big money lured him. He's heading off to Arizona State to be the coach for the Sun Devils. So, Bobby Hurley now the head man at, um, at Arizona State. We got any notable programs out there still looking? Yeah. Looking for somebody to stay? To coach. We got uh, anybody else out there still? Well, let's see. Well, Butler, they lost theirs. So I guess they're still looking. Did they name somebody yet? I haven't named anybody yet. Alabama got theirs. Tennessee got theirs. Uh, Texas got theirs. VCU got theirs. Uh, of course, Chattanooga, I guess, looking for a coach. Since, but the merry-go-round slowing down. Yeah, the carousel's yeah, <laughs> coming down, slowing down a little bit. But, wow, seven guys stood up and said they're leaving. I mean, that's so – I just – I understand the money, lure the money if I'm in their shoes to a point, but – Yeah, we talked about that, was it yesterday uh, or whenever? Yeah, but, uh, I I'm, just – It's just – That really kind of puts a sour taste in my mouth, oh, really. it does. I mean, I guess, yeah, it's they, – they need to refund. I, I still think they need to give the money back that they that they used this year. The players. So, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I would Knowing agree. full well they were going to leave, yeah, they probably didn't even go to class. I guarantee, I bet you if you look at each one of them's grades. You could care less. They could care less. I bet you they're below C's. Because they're leaving and they say, what the heck. I mean, Towns, if he goes to the first round pick, guy's going to be making uh, most, a lot of these, not all of them, a lot of these guys will be making some big bucks. Yeah. And th- that piece of paper will mean nothing to them. 
until they get down the road somewhere. And then, you know, you got to have a piece of paper to go somewhere in life, or at least you used to. But, yeah, these guys will be making big bucks. Uh, I would think attendance in class was probably minimal uh, over the last couple oh, yeah. of weeks, and they figured out they're not going to come back. So, And I, and I think history dictates that um, these kids, when they come out early like that and they go into the NBA, they don't save that money. That money gets wasted. Oh, they burn it. They burn it up, and they don't Blow it. put it back. So when the time comes when they can't play anymore, they don't have any. Yeah, they don't save it for a rainy day. And they don't have a, some, uh, a degree or something to fall back on. Uh, to carry them on down, and it's just sad. Consequences for your choices. Yep. It's a meat market. They use them and send them on the way the schools do, I think. And then the players, I guess, use the schools because they've cut, as we talked about yesterday, cut into that four-year commitment as far as a scholarship. And so, you know, these teams, uh, <laughs> all at a professional yeah. level, it's a business, but it's all about the money. And when they can't perform, they just they just chuck them. They trade them. They get rid of them, and they're done. You know, so they don't, they're not going to care. No, no. So. I'm right there with you. By the way, he's got a text from Gator. He's heard us, and he said, no five for five on Monday. So he clearly is on some kind of a, uh, I don't know, he's eating cough drops. He's kind of lost his mind down there at the <laughs> barbershop. You won't go five for five today. He's hallucinating. As a, or Monday, as yeah, I will. And he won't go five for five today because we're getting ready to take a break and find out, as a matter of fact. We are in the middle of the Tom Taylor Sports Show on this Friday. Lots more to talk about. Again, we've got Michael White's going to join us coming up next half hour, talking about the Blue Gold game tomorrow at East Tennessee State University at Kermit Tipton Stadium. Josh Kite later on the show, the athletic director at Crockett. He and athletic director Danny Good from Daniel Boone. Again, got the uh, blessing of the Washington County Commission last night to uh, change how middle school football is played in Washington County. I think, personally, it's for the good. We'll let him tell us that, too. And also, later on in the show, we have Hank Brown by to tell us about a big road race coming up that he's uh, heading up tomorrow in Bristol. All that. And, again, scheduled to be with us, our buddy Bob from Book Lovers Warehouse in Johnson City. Coming up next will be a brief quiz show because it won't take long. <laughs> this will be real quick and be right on down the line. We'll move on to get more updates on the Masters or something because Horace, it'll be quick, it'll be swift, and it won't be it won't be good to his liking. So, uh, of course, if you go five for five, I'll never get into this because all this stuff I've been saying, <laughs> you will wear me out and deservedly so. Quick break. We'll be right back. we got baseball, football, and golf on the quiz show. Questions for Horace next on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. It's not just a race. It's the place. A place to set up a tent, park the RV, and start emptying the coop. A place to fire up the grill in the Tennessee hills and take in the best short track racing in NASCAR. The place is the last great Coliseum, Bristol Motor Speedway. Hope you'll join us on April 19th for the Food City Five. Call 423-BRISTOL or visit bristolticks.com. It's not just a place. It's Bristol, baby! At Farmers, we make you smarter about your insurance because what you don't know can hurt you. What if you didn't know to update your coverage when adult children move home? Oh, heck no. Or that you could get coverage for identity theft through your homeowner's insurance. And that your valuables can be covered by home insurance even when they're not at home. The more you know, the better you can plan for what's ahead. Talk to farmers and get smarter about your insurance. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at FCA.org. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at BrackenPaving.com.
Back to the Tom Baylor Sports Show. Thank you for being with us. Again, they're practicing at Texas Motor Speedway, getting ready for qualifying later on. At 14 different drivers have won in 18 Texas spring races, 10 active competitors. Uh, former winners of the spring race in Texas will include last year's winner, Joey Logano. Kyle Busch won't be there this year, but he won it in 13. Greg Biffle. Here's a guy who's won it twice in Texas, 05 and in 2012, and needs a victory. He is really struggling. He and the uh, Roush Fenway Racing Team right now need something good to happen. Matt Kenseth has won it twice in 2011 and 2002. Denny Hamlin brought home the checkers in Texas in the spring in 2010. Jeff Gordon, 2009. Carl Edwards in 08. Casey Kane in 06. Ryan Newman in 2003. And guess who won his first race at Texas back in 2002? Because I missed that question earlier in the week. That Earnhardt! Been... <laughs> there you go. That may be the only one he gets. Give him that. Is that true or false? What? Is that, what? Is that true or false? Earnhardt Jr. won his first race in, in Texas. Texas. Well, that not his that... first race, his first cup race. <laughs> Dad gum it. All right. So you would say that is true. All right. So that's what's going on again. The Xfinity race will be going on later tonight. So here we go. Time now for the quiz show. Who might you be playing for today, my friend? I'm going to play for a neighbor friend of mine by the name of Michael Bales. Michael Bales. B-A-L-E-S. B-A-L-E-S. Johnson City Lad. Johnson City Lad. All right. Hit the he works over there at uh, Johnson City uh, Medical Center. Well, Mountain State Health Alliance. He's a maintenance dude over there. Maintenance dude. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> maintenance dude. Now that that sure makes him feel important. What's he do for a living? Uh, he's... <laughs> <laughs> He's a maintenance dude. dude. <laughs> All right, let's hit the music. Here we go. It's time now for the Horse Quiz Show. Playing for that maintenance dude. <laughs> I love it. Love it. You came up. That's great music. Can you play it one more time? I'll be quiet so I can enjoy it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Horses, when we first started the show, is going down through these different bumpers. He, what do you think? I think it's the first one he played. I said, man, I like that one right there. That's good stuff. So, Horace is the man behind the uh, buttons and knobs around this place, and we appreciate that. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, let's see. You're playing for Michael Bells, the maintenance dude at the Med Center. <laughs> I want to meet Michael. Oh, uh, I told you last week I drove by Horace's house. I had to stop by and give him something. I drove by, and I see him sitting on the porch in his rocking chair in the cool of the night or in the evening, with a big stogie and sitting there with his lap, <laughs> with his lap sitting in a rocking chair, rocking back and forth, and he's waving. I said, hey, Horace. He said, hey. So uh, Michael's in that same neighborhood, right? Yep. All right. Yep. Lives around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're hilarious. All right, question number one, baseball trivia. All right? All right. True or false, Babe Ruth, you know, every year they have a rookie of the year, right, in baseball. Right. Babe Ruth, true or false, was the first ever Rookie of the Year in Baseball, true or false? First ever. Rookie of the Year in Baseball, true or false? give me a year. I'm going to say, oh, man. No, first ever. No, this is easy. First ever. It's, I had to give a year, just true well, or baseball's false. Baseball's been a lot, ran a lot longer than Babe Ruth, so I'm going to say that's false. False? Yes. Final answer? Final answer. God, hit the bell. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> it was Jackie Robinson, first rookie of the year. <laughs> okay, I don't think I'm going to like this. All righty. <laughs> Number two, golf. True or false? If a ball falls off a tee before it is hit, it is considered a stroke. True or false? That is true. True. Final answer? Final answer. Hit the buzzer. Oh, oh no. There we go. We're safe again this week. So <laughs> that Falls off the tee. I thought what you put. Oh, man. The ball falls off a tee before it is hit. It is considered a stroke, and that is not true. It is not a stroke. And you said it was, and so you missed yeah. it. So, Okay. Number three, baseball trivia, Whitey Herzog. Whitey Herzog, true or false, managed the Chicago White Sox to a World, Ser World Series title. True or false? Herzog, I think it was the, was it the White Sox. Mm -hmm. Has the White Sox ever won a title? <laughs> I cannot. I'm going to say that's true. True. Hit the buzzer. All uh, right. No. Yeah, uh, we're rocking now. Be the St. Louis Cardinals. All right. Okay. All righty, I'm feeling better by myself. He's one for three. I was uh, focused on the White Sox. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know how I feel when I screw up over here, All right? Uh, Catfish Hunter, baseball legendary pitcher, true yep. or false? He is a member of the Baseball Hall of Fame. Is that true or false? I think that's true. That would be a bell. Go ahead and hit that one. Two for four. 
Can he finish strong with a football trivia question? True or false? The only brothers to both be drafted. Number one draft pick would be the Manning brothers. Is that true or false? Only brothers in NFL history to both be drafted with number one picks would be Peyton and Eli Manning. True or false? I'm trying to think how many brothers have. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. Was Eli Manning farm living his? I'm going to say that's true. True? Yep. Hit the bell, horse. Very good. That's right. All right. He All goes right. three for five. But as we one said. One better than you. As, well, no, I went yesterday. five for five. Oh, went for, no, I didn't do it yesterday. It's buzzer. Oh, that's right. Never mind. Yeah. Did, well, yeah. Elvis' question is you went two for five. Two for five. five. Yeah. But Monday, so you look, you always look at the negative. Monday, I went five for now, five. Good, thank you, Gator. <laughs> yeah. And so that's what I emphasize, the positive. I went five for five. Yes, Wednesday was a dog. Went two for five. Didn't do good. But a horse, that H does not change, and that one beside your name does not change. Hit the but music. I ain't crying about no. it. <laughs> <laughs> you think these questions were stupid? No, those are great sports questions. Oh, okay. So now when I do it, it's stupid questions. When you lose, no, oh, those are great sports questions. Okay. <laughs> so now I feel bad when I call everybody else questions stupid. Mm-hmm. Okay. You got me on that one. So anyway, <laughs> you missed uh, the golf question and Whitey Herzog managing the Cardinals instead of the uh, White Sox. Now, we do have the bet tonight, right? We talked earlier about the lunch bet. Yeah. Make sure we get this right. Lunch bet is as follows. The rules are. Reds playing the Cardinals. I have said the Cardinals will sweep the Reds this weekend at Great American Ballpark. You have said, no, they won't sweep them. Or they will win the series. And as long as they win the series, I say the Reds are going to get swept. They're going to go 0 for, 0 for 3. Is it 0 for 3 or they play 4? They play 3, yep. yep. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I say they'll go 0 for 3. And if they go any combination better than that, then I lose the bet. And i got to take you and, and feed you at the, uh, at the barrel, right? Yep. Okay, that's where we are. And we have Jason Marquis tonight for the Red Legs. You have little face. He'll get chased out of the game in the first inning, and we got Lackey. <laughs> oh, you, 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 I'm telling you, I'm going to sick Hannah don't, on you. Don't sick Greg and Hannah on me. Oh, of, yeah, they're going. They're coming. Yeah. <laughs> You'll tell on me? Oh, yeah. All right, thank you. You, you can't be you, – you're not a Cincinnati Reds fan if you're betting against them. Well, I, I just – I'm a realist because Marty, the guy – You can be a realist, but you don't have to sh- – I just flaunt it. Yeah, well, I'm flaunting it because <laughs> they they don't do well when the Cardinals come to town. I mean, they just okay. they uh, things have got to change. Murphy's law. I mean, well, was mil- it the law of averages. Yeah, milly nilly around, get beat. So law of averages. Yeah, maybe we'll see. Uh, you can go back and track. I did this last year and track the series, the Reds and Cardinals, and the Cardinals own them. I mean, it's it's pitiful. And every time they get into a big series that really means something, the Reds just wilt like a flower in the hot sun. So. Anyway, that's what's going on, and it starts tonight, and we will have, again, uh, things to talk about, of course, on Monday uh, with that. And uh, Gators already said you will not go five for five this Monday. Well, he blows smoke like a chimney. He's told me the same thing over here on my phone. Well, I can't so. say, but the track record is Yeah, <laughs> you own him. Boy, there you go. Look right up there. It's a five. Five for eight in my first eight. I think eight. four of those are Gators. Yes, absolutely. Oh. My first eight weeks of the show. Well, no, I'll be five for nine. This is the ninth week of the show, so I'm five for nine. So that's pretty good batting average. That's better than 50%, Gator. So <laughs> <laughs> while we're on the boys, give him a little pitch here. Tell us about the Cherokee Barbershop before we go to the break. By the way, let me see. If you No, you haven't been down there to get a little, getting a little stubble coming up off that noggin. So do you have plans to go get your ears lowered? Because uh, it's getting a little shaggy. You're starting to build a. A horse, you can't see his hair, so when you see any kind of black over there that's coming back up, that's usually his sign that he's going to get her whacked off. So uh, is that in the offing this, this weekend to get a hair trim? I, it may be next week. Mm-hmm. It may be next okay. week. I haven't decided yet. So yeah. But, uh, yeah, Cherokee Barbershop, that's where I go. Uh, Gator's my man. He, he takes care of me. Um, you're going to go in there, and odds are you're going to have to sit and wait. So you go in, you wait, buy a cup of coffee. And he'll give you a haircut free. But, of course, the cup, cup of coffee is going to cost you $11. They got soda pops in there, too, don't oh, they? Oh, he's got a machine around the corner. A little snack there. machine, yeah, soda yeah, pops. Yeah, you get in yeah. set and everybody telling stories, having a big time. And the yep. uh, last two times I've been in there, place is, uh, uh, you know, he moves them in and moves them out. I don't think he'll sit there all day long. He's got he some ETSU and Milligan pictures on the wall. He's got some other stuff up there on the wall. Yeah. He, he kind of caters to in the sports realm. Got the TV playing, usually some uh, manly show. Mm-hmm. 
of some a manly sort, show of some sort. I hope. Yeah. Now, would that be the voice? And that's no, no, no. I don't fun. think the voice is going to be. Yeah, on. He made funny on the voice. Yeah, <laughs> that's not a man. What would be a manly show like Andy Griffith or something like that? Oh, I don't know. I just usually at Sports Center or something, oh, gotcha. something, something along that line. Yeah, History Channel. Military channel. South Rhone Street, down, right down from the Tipton Haynes Working Farm in Johnson City. The barber pole's out. He's in. Open Monday, closed on Mondays, rather. Tuesday through Friday, 8.30 to 5, and Saturdays, 8.30 to 1. And, again, you wouldn't be a nicer guy. He has put together, by the way, the first annual Mountain Empire chapter of the National Football Foundation Scholarship and Awards Banquet tomorrow. And so we're going to be a part of that, and we're looking forward to it. Uh, I said, do I need to wear a coat and tie? And he just, yeah. Is he bad enough? I said, I got to wear a coat and tie. You know, I don't like wearing coat and tie. Yeah. Not very much. He said, coat and tie. I said, all right, you're MC. I said, okay. Mike Gons will be there. Mike Holt, uh, Scott Carter, Jerry Robertson. I got some real neat folks going to be in there. A special guest will be coming by to talk. And let's see. You know, I don't know if these are surprises. I reckon I should call him during the break, make sure I can announce the winner of these. Uh, <laughs> The last thing I'll do is read these. I got the list of the scholarship. <laughs> he never told me I couldn't read them, so I don't know whether I'm allowed to do it now or, or not. not. Well, that may not. Uh, maybe it's a surprise. That's what I'm not. saying. I don't know. <laughs> yes. I I bet. Give up the surprise. Can you text him and see? Can he mention? Well, I, th- I think he's listening because he's been uh, texting, so he'll probably. Uh, Gator Texas. Things. If I can mention these guys' names, I will. I would think we could, but I want to double check because if it's a surprise, then I'll go down to Martin. He'll sucker punch me as soon as I walk in and go, way to go, <laughs> doofus. <laughs> Get out of here name the name. <laughs> So if I can, I will. But it's tomorrow, 10 o'clock, the Holiday Inn in Johnson City. And, again, the first annual Mountain Empire chapter of the National Football Foundation's scholarship and awards banquet is going to be a lot of fun. 10 o'clock tomorrow at the Holiday Inn in Johnson City. We've been asking. We're very tickled we can do this to honor the players and kind of MC the event tomorrow for Gator and the folks with the National Football Foundation. Quick break coming up. We're going to check in Michael White, Sports Information Director from East Tennessee State University. A little football game going on tomorrow, the Blue Gold game at Kermit Tipton Stadium in Johnson City at Science Hill. I guarantee they'll be crawling over that place tomorrow. The place oh, will yeah. be packed. will be tailgating, getting getting ready for a little football game. The weather's supposed to be perfect tomorrow for this, so it's going to be a lot of fun. And we'll talk to Michael White, the Sports Information Director at East Tennessee State University. He joins us coming up next here on the Friday edition of the Tom Taylor Sports Show. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at brackenpaving.com. Your life is always changing. You never know what shape it will take or how your financial needs might change. But if we talk about your investments and how they can provide for you and your family, the future becomes clear. At Wells Fargo Advisors, we believe conversation leads to financial clarity. Let's start a conversation today. At Farmers, we make you smarter about your insurance because what you don't know can hurt you. What if you didn't know that home insurance can keep your stuff covered even when it's not at home? Or that collisions with wildlife on the road may not be covered. And what if you didn't know you could be liable for any accidents on your property? The more you know, the better you can plan for what's ahead. Talk to farmers and get smarter about your insurance. We are farmers. Bum, da, bum, 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 bum. Hey, Diet Mountain Dew driver Dale Earnhardt Jr. here. On April 19th, I'll be racing at Bristol Motor Speedway in the Food City 500. Tickets start at just $64, so call 423-BRISTOL or visit bristoltix.com today to see me and my Diet Mountain Dew team in Bristol. It's Bristol, baby.
You have two more chances to win today, and certainly Monday is the drop dead last chance to win tickets to the drive to stop Diabetes 300. We'll pick out a winner today and one more on Monday. If you want to get your name in the hat to win tickets to Bristol Motor Speedway's doubleheader a week from tomorrow, the drive to stop Diabetes 300 and the KM Pro Series Pit Light 125, you'd want to go to the Tom Taylor Sports Show at gmail.com. Tom Taylor Sports Show at gmail.com and put your name in the hat and win yourself some uh, tickets to go see the race next weekend. Right now, as far as I can see down the line, I know through Thursday it's going to be in the mid-70s. The weather's going to be very, very nice for the uh, racing next weekend at the last great Coliseum, Bristol Motor Speedway. And so uh, you would want to do that. And all you have to do is go to Tom Taylor Sports Show at gmail.com, put your name in the bucket, and be ready to go for that. By the way, we were talking earlier about the Xfinity Series, the defending champ of that race, Joey Logano winning the Cup Series a year ago in the spring, and the Xfinity Series defending champ Chase Elliott. And this guy, of course, uh, one of the hot stars, the up-and-coming hot stars of the NASCAR Series, and and so he's going to be back there again today. Actually, tonight, 8.30 to drop the green flag for him to try and win the O'Reilly Auto Parts 350 and again on the NASCAR Xfinity Series circuit. And so uh, Kyle Busch leads the series and wins at Texas with seven, including five straight victories from the spring of 08 to the spring of 2010. Busch dominated that track. Of course, he's out right now. Kyle Busch, or rather Chase Elliott, will be defending his Xfinity Series victory tonight at, uh, at Texas Motor Speedway. He'll be the first of four drivers who posted their first win at Texas to do so. That's pretty cool. Uh, the others would be Kyle Busch, as we said. Mark Martin did it in 99 and 2000. And also Carl Edwards, the fall of 2010 to the spring of 2011. So uh, now here's one. See, y'all make fun of my man, Kyle Busch, the only driver since the NASCAR Xfinity Series started competing at Texas twice a year, which is back in 05, to win consecutive spring events in 08, 09, and 2010. He won it three years in a row dominated the spring race at Texas. Won't be there this year. Uh, but, again, Chase Elliott will be defending his crown tonight in the Xfinity Series in Texas, the O'Reilly Auto Parts 350. By the way, hello to the Apester today. Uh, let's see, what was it, a six-pack, four-pack of Easter eggs? What did I get? You I don't remember? know. Usually come in apes, don't they? Uh, I guess it was a six. I six hammered pack? I hammered three pretty hard last night. <laughs> boom, 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 with a big old glass of milk. Cold make your teeth hurt. I had smoked sausage. Gross. Ow. Oh, no, it's awful. Smoked sausage? Yes. Ugh. Like they're like bratwurst. Oh, you. you couldn't pay me to eat that. Oh, yeah. Good. Oh, no. Slap them on a big old bun. Oh, gross. A little mustard and sauerkraut. Oh, spicy? Son. No, not spicy. They're just they're the ultimate hot dog, man. Mustard and sauerkraut. Hillshire Farms, baby. <laughs> <laughs> he is such when a redneck. When Mrs. V leaves and goes does her thing, yeah. I had last night she had said, you got to fend for yourself. And I said, I know one I want. There you go. Got him some smoked sausage and Hillshire mustard and sauerkraut. Put, yeah, put some mustard and sauerkraut on there. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Good grief. I'd be running to the now bathroom. I watched Toronto in the Yankees. I got the yeah. ballpark. Had my hot dogs. Had a cheer wine. Oh, you were in it. I was You're there. on That's it. That's right. So yeah. I was set up. I was at a local restaurant <laughs> last night. And I saw they sell cheer and diet cheer wine. So yeah, have you ever I, had diet cheer? Yeah, diet cheer wine's not it, not quite the same. The, no, it doesn't have the kick. The of, course, kick. of course, it didn't have all that sugar in it either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah really. I was speaking of sugar. I'm looking forward to getting next week. I think there will be some samples in and around the track of the Mountain Dew Dewshine. Dewshine. Yeah, I'll have to get you some. and Oh, you may be up there, I think, one day. So I'm going to get you some Dewshine and and uh, – and let you enjoy that. But so smoked sausage, cheer wine. What else do you have, you said, for dinner? Um, smoked sausage uh, well, with sauerkraut and mustard, cheer wine, and Lay's barbecue potato <laughs> chips. What would you have for dessert? Peeps. 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 <laughs> Had to finish off a pack of peeps. God, this is a grown man. <laughs> peeps. What, what flavor? I don't know. They were yeah. yellow. <laughs> Probably lemon. I don't know. They yeah. taste lemony. There we go. All right, so. I really did it. I did it wrong last night. You did? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm not supposed to have that stuff. <laughs> here we go. Let's go to the phone right now. Let's go to the phone. He's there. Michael White, are you there, my friend? I'm here, Tom. Good to see you or hear you, I guess. Yes, yeah, sir. Here. Thank you for checking in with us. We called a little early, but ready to go here again on a Friday. Hey, we got, I'm going to go out on the limb here and say, I don't know what capacity is tomorrow for the Buck uh, Blue Gold game at, at Kermit Tipton Stadium. I'm going to tell you, weather's going to be nice. There's a lot of energy about this football program. I'll be shocked if it's not nearly packed tomorrow in Johnson City. What do you think? 
Well, that's what we're expecting. Uh, definitely expecting a great crowd out there. It's a beautiful. It's going to be a beautiful day. It's a. It's a day that's been 12 years in the making, really. When you look back, the last time uh, we had a spring game at ETSU, and uh, we we just we hope it's a perfect storm. Not not that there'll be storms, but we hope it's a perfect storm of event uh, with the uh, the good weather, the the spring like conditions, and and some football and, and the return of ETSU Buccaneer uh, football. I know I read earlier in the week where because of some injuries to the offensive defensive line, it's going to be kind of a quote unquote controlled scrimmage. Is that still the, still the key? That is the plan. And, uh, and I think that's just something in the future. It'll be much more of a blue versus gold team. Uh, once we start building the kind of depth that we'll build within the program. But I think it's important to, to remind people that the, the, the team we have now, we've literally had for eight months since the last, you know, since August of last year, so these are still really freshmen, redshirt freshmen, maybe a few transfers tossed in here or there. So uh, the depth just not quite there yet. And if you have a few injuries, that really puts you behind the eight ball. But uh, we'll, we'll have enough to, to definitely play a full, a full game. It'll just be uh, one of those things where when people look out there, they'll see the same, uh, same eight to ten offensive linemen on, on the field. We're talking here. We're talking to Michael White again, the sports information director at East Tennessee State. We'll talk to him a little bit about the other spring sports coming up here in a minute. Let's talk again. Uh, the quarterback, there's four out there right now. There was seven. They're down to four. And, of course, Dylan Wigger will be coming in in the fall, maybe some other kids. So, right now, the quarterbacking, uh, I guess they're evaluating just about every snap to see who might be the man going into fall practice to lead the football team, right? I think they are, and I think if, if just as, a, as an outsider looking in, just watching uh, guys and their performances over the last, like I said, eight months or so, if you take fall practice, I really like Nick Sexton and what I saw out of him. Uh, but then in the most recent uh, scrimmage over in Unicoi, uh, over at Gentry Stadium, I guess that was probably a little over a week ago, uh, a transfer uh, Austin Herrick looked really good. Uh, he, uh, he is a transfer in from uh, Middle Tennessee State. He's originally from Cleveland High School in Cleveland, Tennessee, uh, and left-handed left-handed quarterback looked really good in practice. Uh, had some really good numbers in that scrimmage. So, I think those two guys, and then as you mentioned, Dylan, everybody really excited about him. He's probably one of the one of the highlights, if not the highlight of the of the recruiting class that we signed in February. Uh, I think everybody around here, and of course throughout the region, is looking forward to seeing. Uh, you know, Solomon Salzone out there uh, playing uh, and, and seeing what he can do for us as well. Dr. Michael White, you're around Coach Torbush. What has been his thoughts so far here in spring practice? Uh, uh, you know, is he pleased with what he's seeing? He's got some holes to fill. Overall, how's his thought process for spring practice? Overall, I think he's been very pleased with what he sees. I think he's been exceptionally pleased with our strength and conditioning program. Our guys have uh, really, you can just physically see a difference in our players from just when they arrived here in August uh, to now this point, uh, they just they're they're more solid. They gain they gain muscle, not fat. Uh, they are uh, they're just they're, they have utilized this redshirt season. We talked a lot about it um, as we were going through the process of developing this program. That this first year, these these guys that signed on and came in and knew that they would sit for a year, it was it was a very special opportunity. It's a unique opportunity. Not a lot of college there's not a lot of college programs starting where you can come in and basically know that you have a full calendar year to do nothing but get yourself ready physically. And I think these guys have really taken to that, and they've, uh, we've got a great strength training program here under Coach Al Johnson. Uh, he's, he's, he has been around the best in the business, and uh, we have this brand-new uh, weight training facility, and those guys have utilized that to the fullest. And I think Coach is really pleased about that. I think he's more than anything happy with the way they've gotten physically. Tomorrow starts at 2 o'clock. Do we need to get there early? There are tailgating opportunities. Uh, what, what goes on before 2, and how much does it cost to get in tomorrow? It's absolutely free. We, we, we want everyone to be there. Uh, uh, parking's free. Um, there are all kinds of plans uh, underway. There's going to be um, gates are opening at 12. Uh, there's going to be a buck walk. Uh, basically, we will be uh, disembarking the uh, football team right there at Freedom Hall. They'll make a walk through the uh, basically what are the soccer practice fields just in behind Freedom Hall, just adjacent to Kermit Tipton. They'll make a walk from there to the stadium at one o'clock. Um, we have uh, uh, Mountain State Health Alliance President and CEO Alan Levine will be there as an honorary coach, as well as uh, longtime Tri Cities automobile magnate Steve Grimstaff. They'll both be the uh, honorary coaches tomorrow, uh, and we'll have a kids clinic. 
for uh, anyone, uh, any child, eighth grade or younger, uh, will be able to participate in the kids' clinic after the scrimmage. Um, the scrimmage will kick at two o'clock, and uh, and one of the things we've kind of kept as we've got like a little secret, a little surprise for people, but uh, we're going to have another major announcement about our stadium at, at halftime of the event. Uh, another uh, very generous uh, donation to the program and to the stadium will be happening uh, at halftime. Nate Stubbard, on Michael White, the Sports Information Director again at East Tennessee State here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show on this Friday. Switching gears before I let you go, uh, what's going on this weekend the other the other spring sports right now at East Tennessee State? Well, a lot of them are on the road this weekend, actually. Uh, baseball will be at VMI, up at the Virginia Military Institute, up in Lexington, Virginia, playing a three-game set. Uh, softball's on the road. Our track and field teams are playing. Uh, one of the bigger things that will be going on this week, starting Sunday, uh, the Atlanta, uh, the uh, uh, Southern Conference uh, Women's Golf Championships will be played down in Savannah, Georgia. They'll open those up uh, on Sunday, play those Monday and Tuesday as well. Um, and uh, I think Coach Coach Shelton and her team, they've, they've had a very good, and she's developed a very solid program there. They won a conference title a year ago, and I think they certainly want to try to do that again this year. Um, but as far as, uh, as far as what we're going to be doing over the next day and a half, even though it's uh, April 10th and April 11th, it's, it's all football all the time. And I think uh, – that's going to be exciting for everybody. Can't wait. I'll be out tomorrow. I'll look you up, and uh, I really appreciate what you do. You do a great job keeping us informed what's happening in the Buck Sports community and with Coach Forbes coming on board and now the football team. I think it's a great time, Michael, to be a be a fan or be a part of the of the Buck Nation. Would you not agree? I absolutely believe that to be true and encourage those out there who may not have bought their season tickets yet or aren't a part of this thing to, to come on. This is a uh, – more than a football team, this is a community effort. This is something that we believe will build pride in this region, and, and it's, a, it's a program that this region deserves, and, and we want everyone to be involved. There's, there, is a, there is a place for everyone at the table. Uh, you don't have to be a million-dollar donor to the stadium. You can just buy your season tickets and, and, and scream your head, your head <laughs> off at the games. We, we want everybody to be here. You got it. Hey, I'll see you tomorrow. Great report. Thank you, and I'll talk to you tomorrow, okay? All right. Thank you, Tom. Super job. That guy is good right there. Michael White, Sports Information Director, again at East Tennessee State. And, again, gates open tomorrow at noon. Everybody gets in free. I'm telling you, it'll be a packed house. Why would it not be? Weather's perfect. Uh, again, Buck football, first time in 12 years, going to have a, a blue-gold game. And you got four quarterbacks out there duking it out, trying to uh, strut their stuff for the coach, impress him, and the staff. And, then, of course, uh, the X factor would be the obvious young man that I got a chance to be around, and you were around him too last year, Dylan Wigger over at Solomon South, and he will be – his presence will be immediately felt, I promise you. This kid's uh, the real deal, and so that's a happy problem. You have four quarterbacks right now with one more, at least one more coming into the fall, and Wigger, they may have recruited some more other quarterbacks, but, you know, right now you would say you have a, what, five quarterback hunt for the starting position when they play Kennesaw State in September, so – that, that's pretty neat. So tomorrow, it all starts at, again, gates open at noon. It starts at 2. Everybody gets in free. Free parking. I would get there early. I just kind of enjoy the atmosphere. Watch him do the buck walk, as you heard him say, and just be a part of the fun tomorrow. And, again, everything gets going. Gates open at noon, and they'll kick it off and get with it on the blue, uh, blue gold game to wrap up spring practice for East Tennessee State at 2 o'clock tomorrow at Kermit Tipton Stadium there at Science Hill. High school. Our thought for the day brought to you by our buddy Larry Kaiser from Nationwide Insurance. Like we had lunch, he wanted to be there. He's going to be out of town. He's been. I'd like to go. That's pretty cool because they have recruited. I think they've done a great job recruiting local kids to be in the program at ETSU. And so Kaiser said, "Man, if I could be, I would." But I got to be out of town. But again, he brings us the thought for the day each week or each day of the week. And today's is failure is not fatal, but failure to change might be. Failure to change. Yeah. Failure is not fatal, but failure to change might be. I would agree yeah, with that. you yeah. got to kind of go with the flow. you got to roll the punches. You can't just stay the way you were. Things change, correct? Correct. I mean, this show's changed in nine weeks. We're always tweaking and redoing things. So failure is not fatal, but failure to change might very well be. So that's our thought for the day. Brought to you by our buddy Larry Kaiser from Nationwide Insurance. Again, Nationwide. Let me sing it to you or just say it? No. Just <laughs> Oh, wait, why was that so quick? <laughs> I've heard why, you say. <laughs> why was that so quick? I didn't get a chance to. No, nah, don't want you to sing. But anyway, Nationwide is on your side. And, again, the folks at Nationwide Insurance, 
Uh, I want to say one more time about this Smart Ride program. It's a very, very neat program. It's a, a program that rewards drivers who always play it safe. The safer you drive, the higher the discount you get up to 30%. You earn an instant 5% discount just by signing up. You're a nationwide uh, policyholder. Safe drivers cost less to ensure. They want to pass those savings on to you. There's four ways you can get feedback about your driving. Hard braking, fast accelerations, nighttime driving, and miles driven. Now, this is not a GPS, but anyway, stretch or form. Uh, does not collect GPS information, will not detect your location. Driving data is only collected to help you become a safer driver. It will not uh, negatively affect your premium. You can withdraw from the Smart Ride program at any time. And, again, it goes up into the uh, the little device goes up into the, uh, yep, what I wanted to say. <laughs> it's, uh, a, it's a little module thing. It clicks into the uh, yeah. car's computer system Thank there you. underneath the steering underneath wheel. Underneath the steering wheel. Thank you. Simply plugs into the existing <laughs> port. That's what there it says here. There you go, here. port. Let me go ahead and underline that so I'll know that next time. The existing port located near your steering wheel. Usually located under the steering wheel. Yeah. And so pop it up in there, and there it goes, and it begins to immediately track Again, your miles driven, nighttime driving, fast accelerations, hard braking. Then you get a weekly email about that to find out how you're doing. And then, of course, as we said, when you uh, drive safe that you do, the safer you driver drive, the higher the discount you get up to 30%. If you're a safe driver, Smart Ride was developed especially for you. And, again, it's from Nationwide exclusively, 282-1389, the number to call. That's our buddy Larry Kaiser from Nationwide Insurance, 282-1389. Ask him about the Smart Ride program. It is a Friday again. We are here. What is the Masters update? What's the very latest? Uh, looks like um, Jordan Spieth has uh, gained another shot on uh, Charlie Hoffman. He now stands at 13 under, having played 14. Uh, let's see here. Charlie Hoffman again is um, 7 under. Ernie Ells has finished his round today and stands at 5 under. Paul Casey is 4 under. And Bill Haas is four under. Both of them uh, stand tied for fifth. Uh, they're on their first tee, so uh, they've only played one hole. Yeah. Uh, going down the way here a little bit. Let's see. Phil Mickelson still hasn't teed off. Uh, Bubba Watson uh, stands at two under, having played three holes. Tiger Woods is uh, through twelve and stands at two under. Roy McIlroy has yet to tee off. Really? Yeah. So Roy. What's my guy's name? Who do I like? Uh, Sergio Garcia. Sergio Garcia. Let's see if I can find him real quick. See where he's at. This isn't good. <laughs> I'm scrolling down. I'm scrolling down. I'm scrolling down. I'm scrolling down. Uh-huh. <laughs> I must have passed him. <laughs> well, I'll try to get him after the break. Let's see right. where he's at. Sergio Garcia. I'm trying to see what my man's doing there. And Spieth, what was the guy yesterday that Spieth. Gator didn't know his name? Jesse, yes, George Camilio Spieth. Villegas, I believe. Was a, uh, Villegas? Yeah. V-I-L-L-E-G-A-S, Villegas, I believe is how you say that. How's he doing? I, like, I haven't seen I like that's a golf yet. name. Camilo, I'll have to find it. Camilio, Camilo, Camilio C-A-M-I-L-L-O, Villegas. So <laughs> while you're looking for that before we go to the break, we got Josh Kite waiting in the wings for us. But we'll tell you that a local youngster is signed to play football. Move on. Dobbins minutes stand out. Rashad Hunter. Signing to play football at Carson Newman. All Big 7 first-team defensive lineman with 80 tackles, six quarterback sacks. Also had five and a half yards per carry running the football and scored five touchdowns for Dobbins minute. Rashad Hunter moving on to play football at Carson Newman. And so he'll be an Eagle now at Carson Newman College. So, again, Dobbins minute standout. Rashad Hunter now going on to play football at Carson Newman. So there you go. Quick break. We'll be right back. We'll check in with our buddy Josh Kite, the athletic director from Crockett. Give you the update on changing or modifying middle school football in Washington County. It's interesting what they've done. I think it's for the good, and we'll find out from him why he thinks it is is as well. And he joins us coming up next here on the Friday edition of the Tom Taylor Sports Show. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at brackenpaving.com. 
At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at FCA.org. It's easy to buy insurance and forget about it. But the more you learn about your coverage, the more gaps you might find. Like how you thought you were covered for this. Check it out, Mom. When you're really only covered for this. Or how you figured you're covered for this when you're actually paying for this. You might be surprised at what's hiding in your coverage. Talk to farmers and get smarter about your insurance. We are farmers. Bum, da, bum, 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 bum. See what might be hiding in your coverage at farmers.com slash gaps. It's not just a race, it's the place. A place to set up a tent, park the RV, and start emptying the coop. A place to fire up the grill in the Tennessee Hills and take in the best short track racing in NASCAR. The place is the last great Coliseum, Bristol Motor Speedway. Hope you'll join us on April 19th for the Food City Five. Call 423-BRISTOL or visit bristolticks.com. It's not just a place. It's Bristol, baby! And we welcome you back to hour number two of the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Heard in nine states, and we appreciate that very much. And growing every day. Keep getting Facebook likes and follows. We appreciate that very much. We're now being heard in Kansas, California, South Carolina, Virginia, North Carolina, Florida, Michigan, Georgia, and, of course, right here in the great state of Tennessee. Let's go to the phone. He's our athletic director from Crockett High School in Jonesboro, Josh Kite. Good afternoon, sir. How you doing? Tom, I'm doing great. Appreciate you having me on. Yes, sir. Let's talk about it. Let's go right to it. The, the decision made to consolidate the middle school football teams in Washington County. Tell me what this is all about. So, Tom, we just looked at mainly, in my opinion, two concerns that just stood out to me the most was our competitiveness, you know, against competition. I believe just lack of competition, you know, when you're having several schools and we have maybe filling a team with 11, 12 kids, it's really hard to get out there and compete. And then my other main issue was our safety. Uh, we have sixth graders playing against eighth graders, and who you knows as well as I do, when you got a 160-pound kid going up against a 60-pound kid, the outcome usually is not too good. And, uh, you know, towards the end of the season, that's what was happening with a couple of our schools. Uh, like I said, it's just for instance, Grandview, we had uh, a start of the season of about 18 kids, and then we were down to 13 kids. And uh, how do you expect to compete at that level? But we sent a kid out against the opponent, and, uh, you know, he got injured. And the last kid we had on the, you know, on the sideline was a sixth grader. He weighed 60 pounds, and, you you know, he's been standing on the sideline all day, and he's telling him to get in there and play a series. Uh, you get a 160-pound eighth grade kid, you know, they're going to target him. And it's just, you know, can, got the kid got a concussion. It's just not, not safe. So we feel that. You know, consolidating these schools will have a good, solid foundation. We get that team of, you know, 50 to 70 kids, 60 kids. We're going to start start it off where they all play together. Sixth graders will not play uh, middle school ball. They'll play with the junior pioneer system. Seventh grade, have a seventh grade team. They'll play strictly with seventh graders, and then we'll have an eighth grade team where they strictly play with eighth graders. So the seventh graders, best quarterback in the area, he's going to stay at seventh grade. He's not going to play eighth grade unless there's just not enough people to fill the eighth grade slot. So you have your opportunity to get out there and compete and win a position and, you know, really show what you can do. And the fact is, we're starting these kids at a, you know, at the junior pioneer level and working them all the way through the system, staying them together. So when they're breaking off, you know, right now they're breaking off the middle school, going to one of their five feeder schools and, you know, then they just forget about each other, and then they get back to the high school, and they're, hey, I played at Jonesboro, or, hey, I played at Grandview. Oh, I'm not supposed to like you. Well, if we start them at age six and seven, they're going to play all the way until they're 18, until they, you know, graduate high school. So just, you know, developing that and, 
you know, like I said, we're a 5A school, and the, the league we're competing in, most of the schools that we're playing against are, you know, three, three A schools. I mean, the only really true competition would be kids that feed into Central. And, you know, we're playing up against Morristown East, Morristown West, you know, play the side field, Dobbins Bend at Sevier County. we got to get these kids prepared, you know, at seventh grade. Well, Donald, That's Josh. Good. Donald. I could sit here and talk about it for a while, Tom, but I know you got, I guess, got to stuff to do. <laughs> We're talking to Josh Kite again from Crockett. So you have partnered with Daniel Boone, Danny Good, their athletic director. He's all about this too, right? Absolutely. Oh. And uh, we, you know, we just got together and we started looking. You know, at the end of the year, we weigh, every, you know, look at all of our sports and how they're doing, how they can, you know, the competitiveness. That, is it fair? Is, is what we're doing, you know, that, is they're going to get something out of it or are they just, you know, out there just to enjoy themselves well we want them to enjoy themselves but like i said when you got 13 kids out there and you're expecting to compete it's it's a major safety concern and you know he feels the same way uh you know it was passed the vote you know the, by the board i've seen the paper and we're going to try to get on this and hopefully get it started which you know we'd like to get it started uh next season but we just got to work out all the logistics you know from buying uniforms and names to Let's not forget about the cheerleaders. They, we've got to, you know, combine that together. The transportation stuff, we're getting worked out as we speak. We feel like we've got a strong threshold on that. And, you know, to bring all that together in three months, it's a little difficult. And we want to do this thing right, and we want to keep this thing for years to come with somebody, you know, as the kids grow up. We're talking to Josh Kite, athletic director of Crockett High School. I think this is exciting. I think this is a great move. I've been in that situation where I was a little guy going out on the field, and it wasn't much fun. I was like, in fact, at one point they said, go out there and guard that guy. And I said, me? And I was the only one there, and I thought, man, I got creamed. So I understand where you're coming from. It's not much fun going out there and getting your brains beat out when it's uh, a decided you're a decided underdog. And so I applaud you and Danny for doing this and the board and Superintendent Dyke. So we'll uh, continue to – kind of chart that let's talk about crockett let's talk about crockett for just a second your baseball team's having a great run uh, your softball team's having a great run tell us about the spring sports in crockett right now as i said just right last time we talked it's continued success everybody's uh there's a lot of molding together and it's just becoming contagious winning uh like their softball team went down there and won a silver medalist in the charleston tournament you know our baseball team they you know they competed very well in, in middle tennessee they come up short but again you're playing against you know, the best competition that, you know, teams that are on nationally televised high school teams. So it's a, it's a good thing. And like I said, we're in first place. Boys softball, or excuse me, baseball is in first place, and girls softball is uh, tied for first. Uh, we fared pretty well yesterday, beating UH 11-1, and, and, you know, played a tough Union Boy County team, could have went either way and lost 75. But, you know, it, uh, like I tell a lot of people, it matters getting that seating and getting that tournament and moving on. We're so that's, that's, that's what our, our expectations are are high, and you know soccer. Again, I can't speak enough. When you got being outscored several years ago, fifty six to five, and now you're a five hundred team. There's a lot of a lot of good stuff, and, and and getting on the track. You know, we're getting a new track in about uh, thirty days. It's full rubberized track. All the so it's something that's been needed down the Crockett for a long time. It's just got to prove. A lot of happened in the spring, Tom. It's good stuff. Absolutely. And before I let you go, where, what when is spring football practice for Crockett this year? Well, we uh, uh, towards the I got to get with Coach Boskin, but it's coming up here within the next uh, thirty days. I don't I don't have my schedule out in front of me, but yeah, I know he's excited. And like I said, with this addition to the middle school consolidation, you know, first thing Coach Boskin did, hey, I want to design the uniforms, or hey, I want to be a part of this. What I, what can I do? So. You know, we're just excited to get those kids up to spring football practice and be a unit as opposed to sending them to every other school and then do their own thing. And and uh, it's uh, but it's coming up here very soon, and we look forward to seeing what uh, there's there's a high expectation there, even though we're our backs against the wall with this uh, suspension, which I disagree with, and the TL delay, but that's another story. Uh, but to get those kids up there and just being around it and being a unit, I think uh, it's building just a, a great foundation and just continuing the success. Before I let you go, tell us the feeder schools, the middle schools that feed into Crockett, and also the middle schools that feed into Daniel Boone. Well, of course, right now we've got South Central, Westview, and Grandview, uh, and then we got Lamar and Jonesboro. Uh, South Central does not have a team they combine with Westview, 
and uh, Jonesboro and Lamar. Jonesboro is our biggest uh, school as far as football. You know, they had a successful year this year. So there's a lot of good stuff going on at each school. And, of course, on the north side of the county, you've got Feeding of the Boone. You've got uh, Sulphur Springs, Fall Branch, Ridgeview, uh, Gray, and Boone's Creek, which uh, Sulphur Springs and Fall Branch combined. But, again, you know, even combining them, I only had two people come out for one person come out for football for uh, South Central. So, again, it's not – It's not. we're not surprising anybody. We already do it with one school. They, You know, we're just going to add a couple more. Before I let you go, I want to totally switch gears. I want to ask you a question. Of course, yesterday Kentucky comes out. they got seven guys leaving their team. Okafor leaves Duke. Uh, he's going early to the NBA. you agree with this or dis- disagree? You've played it. You've coached it. You're an athletic director. What's your thoughts on these guys leaving early, going to the NBA? Well, I think the president's set. You know, I, they know when you go to Kentucky, you're one and done. Uh, and then John Calipari talking about, you know, athletes should get paid and, and stuff like that. Well, if we're paying athletes, then, of course, you know, I can see both ends of it. We're paying athletes, you know, the smaller schools, how are they going to be able to afford it with your attendance, your money coming in? You know, but on the other side, it is hard to live. You know, I lived it one day, you know, you're eating PB&J and Raymond noodles. But, <laughs> uh, you know, will it will it affect the recruiting and how you do things? Well, yeah, sure. If, I, if I'm in Kentucky and I get offered $25,000 to come there and do whatever I want to with it, and that'd be pretty nice. Uh, but then again, you know, if you're good enough, you're going to go to Kentucky anyway, regardless of the money. So, you know, it's just it's just one of those things that getting off of that, you know, rambling on that a little bit. But, uh, you know, you going to Kentucky, do I think you can leave? I, I have mixed emotions on it. I think some kids have been pretty successful. I think some kids should have stayed. But am I against it? No, not really. We're talking to Josh Kite. Very last question, because you pitch baseball and you've been around baseball. How big a deal was it for Daniel Norris, 21-year-old kid, to go into Yankee Stadium last night, give up a long ball to A-Rod, but hang on, get his first ever win in front of Yankee fans and storied Yankee Stadium as a 21-year-old kid? How big is that? It's amazing. I, you know, like I said, I, we, I was, I tried to get home. We had a a soccer game, and I was trying to get home to watch it. I know everybody got together at Buffalo Wild Wings to watch it. Uh, it's just an amazing feeling, you know. To, he's a great kid. He's got a great story, and you you got to root for the guy. I mean, there's nothing really you can say about him. So I just enjoyed watching him progress, and, uh, and I, he's, he's just had some really good stuff. You know, people say he missed a few location spots. Well, not everybody's going to throw at perfect location. All, everybody misses location. But you know what? The good thing, like you said, is he got a W. He beat C.C. Sabathia, who's a Cy Young Hall of Fame pitcher. And, you know, that's that's what he gets to take under his belt when he's done and, you know, when he has kids someday to tell him about. I remember the first time, you know, I ran into C.C. Sabathia and he gave me a ride to the airport when I was in Cleveland. He asked me where I was going, and I said, well, I, I'm stuck down here and extended. And he said, well, I'm going to the big leagues, and I want to say, well, no, you know what, but – <laughs> so uh anyway yeah I, i'm pulling for him i know that you got whole johnson city pulling for him and i just he's got good stuff he's left-handed and you know he's got a good head on his shoulder what what more can you ask for you got it hey great report i know you've got other things to do thank you for your time you're awesome and we'll be back in touch real soon and, and thanks for being on the show all right all right you too man you did a wonderful job thanks guys all right take care great job josh Kiter, athletic director at crockett high school and, again, very, very good information about that middle school football program. So it'll be sixth graders against sixth graders, seventh against seventh, and eighth against eighth, and they're not going to be able to go up. And I think that's pretty cool. You want to stay. I think that creates camaraderie. I think he made a good point that uh, as you go forward, all the seventh graders stay together in the five school systems. So you got uh, five, both Boone and Crockett have five seventh grade teams moving up to the eighth grade or six to seven, seven to eight. Of course, eight or right on up in the high school of the freshman team. So I would think that would build unity and cohesiveness, I would think. So uh, pretty cool stuff. Now, you have a homework assignment this weekend. I meant to tell you this yesterday. <laughs> you give me homework all the time. Yeah, I want you, here's homework assignment. I want you to find us a Toronto Blue Jay pennant put up here. I have oh, no clue. Wow. I don't know where in the Tri-Cities you can get a Toronto Blue Jay pennant, but I want one because I'm all about all right. Daniel Norris. We'll find something. Yeah. And I'm going to get to take his picture. I guess in the top in the uh, John City Press, if you can get a picture of that up here on the old webcam. Can you see that? 
Yeah. Is that good? Yeah, you can see that. I'll try to find that online and get posted up here. Let me see if I can find that online during the break whenever ne- next time we go. Yeah, I want to blow that up. I want to get that picture and blow it up and frame it and put it up here beside Tony Perez or wherever it needs to be because I'm all about Daniel Norris. This kid is awesome. Goes into Yankee Stadium, one of the most storied bar- ballparks in Major League Baseball. And as Josh said, beats a future Hall of Famer, C.C. Sabathia, head-to-head and gets his first W and gives up a home run to future Hall of Famer Alex Rodriguez So and still wins the game. And still, I'm sure, is the same Daniel Norris today as he was yesterday. You've been around him. He hung out with your son, so he keeps pretty level head, doesn't he? He does. Yep. And I just found the picture, and I should have it up here in just a few seconds. There you go. See, horse is on it. He's like going like white on rice, man. He has got it <laughs> down. This guy's good. Also, I want to remind you, we talked to him yesterday, but there's a big wrestling tournament coming to town starting today in Kingsport. 600 kids, 26 teams, 12 states, K-5, through five, uh, kindergarten through fifth grade, coming to town for the AAU Wrestling Elementary National Dual Championships. Opening ceremonies at 5 o'clock at Dobbins Minute. Competition will follow opening ceremonies and continue on Saturday and Sunday. Admission is $10 for adults, $5 for children, starts Today, this afternoon, at the Buck Van Ness Dome at Dobbins Minute. And that'll be a lot of fun, and that's going to be a great, great evening. And it wraps up on Sunday, crowning the national championship of the Elementary Duels, AAU Wrestling Elementary Duels. Opening ceremonies at 5 o'clock today. 26 teams, 12 states. Again, 600 youngsters coming in here at kindergarten through fifth grade into the Tri-Cities to wrestle, to go out of here, uh, considered to be as a team and individual national champion which is really neat and neat thing about that too is the king sport battles orlando they have a lot of the aaus that used to go around all parts of the country they've put them all really centrally located in and around disney in orlando now and yet king sport still has the aau elementary wrestling duels because of the job they've done year after year after year we had frank led on yesterday talking about that event so uh, pretty cool stuff and we salute King Sport, and if you get a chance, get over and watch it. Yeah, even little ladies get over wrestling. We got the little girls wrestle against the guys, and and uh, I remember last year, little, I was over there, and a little girl pinned a little boy, and he came to the bench, and you got to know his buddies wore him out. He looked like he's probably second or third grade. A little girl pinned him. He came to the bench, and they were just uh, <laughs> they were on him because they let a little girl pin him. So it was pretty good stuff. So Norris's picture is up now, by the way. Got it up. All yeah. right. Before we go to the break, Masters update, what's the very latest? They're still playing in a hot and steamy Augusta, Georgia, with the Masters here this afternoon. What's the latest? Uh, Hoffman's gained a – well, let's see. These, they're still – who no. Uh, Spieth is now through 15. He's 14 under, minus six for the day. Charlie Hoffman's minus three for the day, but he's still uh, six shots. Yeah, six shots back, minus eight. Uh, Ernie Els, uh still – he's finished. Of course, he's at five under – uh, let's see here. Some other notables. Phil Mickelson, uh, minus two. Uh, he's even for the day. He just teed off. Um, Tiger Woods is still minus two after 13. He's three under for the day. Uh, Bubba Watson, uh, minus one. Uh, he's after four holes. Uh, let's see here. I saw somebody here you were looking for. Was it Sergio? Uh, Sergio. Sergio Garcia. Uh, he is back to even after 12 holes. Uh, he's four over for the day. Um, started off, well, no, he's down to even. I take it back. He started minus four, so he's four over, so he's back to even. Uh, Roy McElroy has just teed off. Uh, he's still, um, well, he's plus one for the day, so he bogeyed that first hole. Um, You're on it today. There was somebody you were looking for, too. Started with a V. Oh, I know. He was tied for 66th. There you go. Camillo, no, he's now tied for 72nd. <laughs> Camilo Villegas, is that how you say it? Uh, that sounds good to me. He's five over. Uh, he's five over for the tournament. Really? Yeah, he started off even, and he's five over for the day, so he's five over. Uh, he may not make the cut. I think uh, Gator sent me a text a while back. They think the two over will be the cut today. Oh, really? Yeah. Two over will be the cut to get him moving on to the next round. Before we go to the break, again, uh, sad story today. Lauren Hill, remember this young lady? Spent her final year polishing a layup and inspiring others to live fully, succeeding in both as she fought an inoperable brain, inoperable brain tumor. Well, the 19-year-old freshman lost her fight this morning at Mount Joseph's Hospital uh, this morning. And, of course, uh, she just said, I'm going to do this, I'm going to fight this, and, and she did. And so 
we salute her. And, of course, as we said, she lost her battle today for, of, of uh, battling the cancer, the, again, an operable brain tumor. And so loses her at the age of 19. But she fought it right down to the bitter end. And uh, we say thank you uh, for what she did to – you know, bring a lot of awareness to to a tough disease and also just to be a fighter and a champion. So, anyway, Lauren Hill passed away this morning at the age of 19, again, from an uh, inoperable uh, brain tumor and brain cancer. Quick break. We'll be right back again on this Friday. We will be checking in with Hank Brown from, uh, let's see, from WeRunEvents.com. He's due to join us coming up next year on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Life has its twists and turns. It can take many different shapes. But a good retirement plan changes with your life. And as we talk about what you're putting away and how much you'll need to retire, what was uncertain becomes clear. At Wells Fargo Advisors, we believe conversation leads to financial clarity. Let's start a conversation today. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles, to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store. Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at brackenpaving.com. At Farmers, we make you smarter about insurance. Because what you don't know can hurt you. What if you didn't know that it's smart to replace washing machine hoses every five years? What if you didn't know that you might need extra coverage for more expensive items? And what if you didn't know that teen drivers are four times more likely to get into an accident? So, the more you know, the better you can plan for what's ahead. Talk to farmers and get smarter about your insurance. We are farmers. Bum, ba, da, bum, 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 bum. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. Hey, Diet Mountain Dew driver Dale Hart Jr. here. On April 19th, I'll be racing at Bristol Motor Speedway in the Food City 500. Tickets start at just $64, so call 423-BRISTOL or visit bristoltix.com today to see me and my Diet Mountain Dew team in Bristol. It's Bristol, baby. Back on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. Thank you for being with us here again on this Friday. We'll be picking out a winner of tickets here coming up between now and the end of the show. So uh, we have one more chance, or you have one more chance, to win tickets to Bristol coming up on Monday. So over the weekend, simply go to uh, the Tom Taylor Sports Show at gmail.com, put your name in the bucket, and we'll see if Monday we pull your name out to win tickets to Bristol for next Saturday's doubleheader, 425 laps of racing next Saturday at the last great Coliseum. Speaking of racing, we've got something going on tomorrow in Bristol, and this is the Bristol Half and Half Half Marathon. Our buddy Hank Brown's with us from WeRunEvents.com. Good afternoon, sir. How are you doing? I'm good, Tom. How are you? Just fine, sir. Thank you for checking in with us. In fact, we're going to talk about that, and he's got one in Virginia next week, and in a couple of weeks got a got two of the same day in Irwin and Jonesboro. We'll talk about all those coming up. But first, the Bristol Half and Half Half Marathon two-person relay tomorrow. Tell us about it, would you please? Yeah, uh, I'd be glad to, Tom. We're really, really excited about this. Um, you know, this benefits uh, the American Cancer Society. You know, last year, you know, an electromechanical corporation here in Bristol really does a super job with this. They've really taken this and, and gone with it. Um, they We presented a check for $50,000 to the American Cancer Society last year. So all they're, we're hoping to present a check at least that size this year. So it's uh, really, really for a great cause, um, and um, it's kind of near and dear to to my heart and Natalie's heart. We're both cancer survivors, so we uh, we put a little extra effort into this event, as uh, um, because it, it really means a lot to us. So we're we're really looking forward to it tomorrow. 
Absolutely, for a lot of reasons. Now, where will it take place? And for those out there who don't know, what is a half marath- marathon? What's that all about? Okay. Well, it's, this is a very unique race, and it's, and it's the reason it's called a half and half marathon because roughly half of it is in Virginia and the other half is in Tennessee. And it is a half marathon, which is uh, 13.1 miles. Still a long way. <laughs> I can't run that far right now. <laughs> uh, it starts at Virginia High School on the track. We do a lap on the track, and then we run through uh, some of you know Bristol's more historic areas, um, and, uh, and then we finish at uh, Tennessee High School at Stone Castle. So it's you know I think it's very unique. Start in Virginia High, finish at Tennessee High, hmm. and uh, you run along the way. You're going to really run through some very nice neighborhoods. You pass under the the big Bristol sign. Uh, you go by the train station. You know a lot of neat things along the way. It's just really a nice, nice event. So if you could wave a magic wand, how many folks do you hope will be there in, in anticipation of the numbers tomorrow? Well, we're looking for uh, right at 500 hmm. um, runners, and which is you know up from last year. Uh, that's really a nice, uh, really a good number. Uh, we're pretty excited about that. And, and I looked at the weather report just the other day. I mean, it's absolutely perfect for uh, running it might be just a tad chilly in the morning but runners like that and um, and it will warm up to be very comfortable uh, throughout the morning talking to hank brown again we run events.com he heads it up of course that's the website you can see the whole calendar of events and they got a bunch of them coming up that is tomorrow uh before we move on to the next race too late to be involved in that can we walk up there tomorrow is it too late to get registered no you can still register uh we always like to allow people to register up to the last minute. So uh, there is a, um, a registration and packet pickup tonight from 5 to 7 at the Bristol train station. And uh, there's a pasta dinner along with that. So uh, just walk on up there and you can register there or in the morning at Virginia High School. You can register there up until about 7.30. The race starts at 8. We're talking to Hank Brown now next week, moving ahead, uh, the 18th, a week from tomorrow, the Colors of Cancer 5K, 10K in Virginia. Tell us about this race. Well, this is a new one for us, Tom. It's been going on a few years, so pretty excited about it. It's, it's a color run, and I think a lot of people know what a color run is nowadays. It's where you, <laughs> you run, and, and there's a and you get your shirt gets drenched with color, and it's really just colored cornstarch. And by the end of the run, you, you, when you had a white T-shirt, you got a very colorful uh, kind of a fun T-shirt. It's just, it's just a lot of fun. They're raising money for a cancer as well, raising awareness for cancer. It takes place in Berks Garden, Virginia. If, if you've never been there, it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. It's uh, right on top of a kind of top of a mountain inside a bowl, believe it or not. Uh, it's worth the trip. It is um, a couple of hours up there from the Tri-Cities area, but it's really a, a nice run. So we're looking forward to this one. We, we've, we've been up to Berks Garden before, but we haven't been to this race. Of course, you can check out everything he's talking about on his website at werunevents.com. Hank, up next, we've got two in a couple of weeks, one in Jonesboro, the Justice in Motion 5K, and then an Irwin right down the road from Jonesboro, the Nolachucky 5K River Run, both on the 25th. Tell us about those two, would you please? Yeah, thanks, Tom. Uh, the Justice in Motion is in the morning, and it, it is in Jonesboro. And um, they're moving the course this year, and it's going to start and finish in downtown Jonesboro, which is, you know, very nice, very historic. Um, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to make a double loop, so uh, don't ever get too far away from downtown. Uh, and this uh, this is a really nice event uh, that, you know, benefits um, uh, victims, uh, of crime, and um, and the um, the people there in, in Jonesboro was really do a nice job. They they really kind of go all out. This is the I think the fourth year of this event, and they always get a good turnout. We we like that race. It's it's a lot of fun, and we're we're kind of looking forward to the new course down in Jones down in uh, downtown. And we're that afternoon at four o'clock. We're going to move on over to Irwin. <coughs> And uh, the uh, Unicoi County Chamber of Commerce puts this one on. And let me tell you, they, they are going all out for this one. This is, I think, the third or fourth year for this one as well. 
Uh, it's called a river run because it, it run, runs along the Nolichucky River, pretty flat, believe it or not, and um, uh, and they have a big feast after this run. I mean, they, I think Fats is coming in, catering uh, a really nice uh, dinner for all the runners afterwards, and they have bands playing, so it's it's a lot of fun. So we're going to be in Jonesboro in the morning, and then we're going to get jump in our van and head on over to Irwin in the afternoon. We're gonna we're just going to be running all day. You got it. Sounds like a lot of fun. Again, all this is on his website, werunevents.com. Again, uh, the man who makes it go, Hank Brown. Hank, thanks, my friend. Good luck tomorrow. That's a great – I love that. Starting in Virginia High and wrapping up at Tennessee High, uh, the half and a half marathon to help raise money for the American Cancer Society. That is a fantastic cause. And hope you all raise a lot, a lot of money like you did last year. And I hey, appreciate your time. I'll talk to you soon, all right? Tom, we really appreciate you. Thanks for letting me come on. Yes, sir. Good man right there. Uh, he is – I uh, treasure his friendship, our buddy Hank Brown with us again from – we run events.com and again uh, that'll be happening tomorrow in uh, go to the website in downtown bristol starting in virginia high and finishing in tennessee high. that's pretty cool that, that's that's gonna be a fun run tomorrow and he's right temperature is going to be very very nice in the morning to be involved in that marathon well another one's jumping jumping chip sam decker leaving <laughs> wisconsin for the nba just came out six foot nine forward average 19 points he's out he's leaving okafor is leaving for from duke you got seven from Kentucky now. Junior Sam Decker leaving for the NBA. Just came out. And what this was it? Afternoon. His coach just said uh, he kind of criticized Shusevsky that we're not uh, rent a player. Rent a players. Yeah. There you go. So <laughs> and one of his own is jumping ship. One of his own leaving. <laughs> Eat some crow there, big guy. Yeah, you're not a big fan, are you? <laughs> not anymore. No. no. Uh, the, the team I was rooting for him hard and heavy, but now after the fact, uh, you put him that, over here. That coat, yeah. Put his name down there. He's there a cry baby. Go. All right, cry baby. He is the 20th person, a 20 thing that <laughs> Horace doesn't like. His name's Bo Ryan, right? There you go. Yeah. Cry baby. Bo, sissy cry baby. Okay, Bo Ryan. He doesn't like him. All right, but anyway, Decker is bolting for the NBA, so he's going to move on. So is uh, Ola Four, as we told you, and also the seven guys from Kentucky yesterday. I'm sure there will be more. But anyway, that's, that's what's going on right now in the NBA and in college basketball. You know what I'm going to ask you? What's the latest? What's the update on the Masters? For uh, not well. There's not much changed in the last 20 minutes. Uh, they're still playing. Uh, <laughs> uh, Charlie Hoffman has gained one stroke on uh, Spieth. Uh, it's now uh, five strokes back. Uh, Spieth still stands at uh, 14 under. Hoffman's now nine under. Uh, Ernie Els, of course, finished at five under. Paul Casey's four under, and Angel Cabrera is three under. There you go. That's your top five right there. And Gator said the cutoff's going to be two under? Probably, no, two over. I mean, two over? Probably, he, well, projected cut is two yeah. over. Now, how does Gator know? Is he? I guess he follows this pretty big. I mean, yeah. like I said, he went last year. So. Yeah. He was down there? He was down there. Oh, I didn't realize that. I don't that. know what round he went to, but, yeah, he was down there. Yeah. You going to do pup Is he going to do pup with us again this year for the uh, oh, St. Jude's? Would, he wouldn't miss that for the world. Yeah, for the uh, what was it, Hawaiian Hoedown boys. Yeah, we have to find us a force yeah, now. Yeah. I think, uh, 220 bailed on I us. I think he bailed. Yeah. yeah, we can snag somebody. Weinman. There you go. Weinman. He'll be right there. <laughs> I, I can't see him in a Hawaiian shirt. Though. Oh, I can. Oh, you can? Oh, okay. oh, are you kidding me? Yeah, there's our fourth guy, Hawaiian Hoedown, Tommy Weinman. He'll play putt putt because he <laughs> plays golf. Okay. He's a big golfer. He goes he's home. our ace. We'll, yeah. he'll, he'll anchor us. If he's our ace, but he'll be the <laughs> he'll anchor us. We're depending on Wyman to anchor our putt putt team. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't feel too good about it now. I thought well, we well, well, shoot. When you get down on your belly like a whale and then pull cue up. <laughs> good point. <laughs> I mean, Wyman's our ace. How serious <laughs> can we get? <laughs> Wyman's our ace. He's in. You got it. Tommy Wyman will be our ace for the Hawaiian hoedown putt putt boys. Be later on. What was that in June? I can't remember when it was. June I or July. It was hot. I remember that. Oh, it was hot and steamy, but we showed up at a big time to raise money. Big night raised 30. We didn't, but they raised $30,000 one night. That's clear, free and clear money for St. Jude's Putt Putt there on Stone Drive in Kingsport. So we showed up in our Hawaiian shirts, Hats, ball caps, lays, work boots. We're in lays. Oh, yeah. Bib overalls. I mean, we were, <laughs> yeah. Since we walked across the street, you heard this little murmur in the yeah. crowds like oh, We had fun, man. Oh yeah, we, we had, had a blast. Fun. Said, Who are these yo yos? And we walked up or honest to Pete. We just the crowd just kinda of parted. Parted like, like the Red Sea. Three 
Three, four screwballs dressed in Hawaiian print shirts. But I think we set a precedent. Yes, I, we I, did. Bet you, I bet some more groups will show yeah. up a little bit more animated this sure. year. Sure, dressed up and having fun with us for a great <laughs> call. So the Hawaiian hoedown boys, Tommy Wyman, if he'll do it, will be our ace in the hole for the putt-putt boys. I think it comes up in July, if I'm not mistaken, but we'll be there whenever it is. That's going to be a lot of fun. So thanks again to Hank Brown. It is the Tom Taylor Sports Show again on this Friday. Again, the, what, 10th day of April, 2015, wrapping up our 45th day together in our ninth week of doing this show and loving it, and it's getting bigger every day, and we appreciate that, and uh, we are growing, are we not? I think so, yes, sir. Yeah, we are growing, no question, and we appreciate the folks that are coming on board, both financially as the sponsors, or extending what the sponsors that we have, and we've got more coming, and we're very excited about that. One of those, we starting next week, our buddy Richard at Kingsport Cabinetry. Yeah. He's coming on board. In fact, he's going to come in and do my – he's going to redo my cabinets and uh, later on in the year. And he's also – he does countertops, kitchen countertops. He's going to redo my countertop for me. So, I'm pretty excited about I, that. I'll tell you what's really amazing. I never would have thought this when we started this, that um, the live portion of our show, what we're doing right now, is not the generating factor. Mm -hmm. It's the podcasting. Mm -hmm. If people can go back and download the show and listen to it at their leisure anytime they want, they can go back and listen to prior shows. Mm -hmm. That's uh, true. And, and it, it's great. You know, and when you got people out there now that you bump into and they say, hey, I've heard the heard y'all talking about this and that, you know, uh, I guarantee you it, it's probably been because of the podcasting, not because of the, the live show. Um, you know, although I'm loving the live part, I think the live part's growing too. Yeah. Um, it's it's great. I mean, yeah. I, I never would have thought podcasting was that big, but uh, that's the wave of the future, and I'm I'm glad to be on the front end of it. Drew Meister said that's where it's going to go, and he yep. was exactly right. So, in fact, I got a text last night from Gator said couldn't hear the show yesterday because the barbershop was full, which is a happy problem to have. And yep. said he went home was going to go home last night and listen to the show. So, a lot of folks do that. Great segue. We're right now livestream dot com. You can uh, just type in the Tom Taylor Sports Show uh, later on this evening. He puts it up on the Cyber world, as he calls it, out there in the <laughs> nebulous. You'll be able to hear us on where? You can go to TuneIn Radio. Mm -hmm. uh, you, that's an app on your phone, or you can go to TuneIn.com, TuneInRadio.com. Uh, download the show there and listen to it. You can go to Stitcher. There's also an app available for that on your on your Android phone. Or I, I don't, not, I'm not sure that's available on on uh, iPhones. It may be, but if you have an iPhone, you can always get it off iTunes. That's the another third venue uh, for our podcasting. And then I also uh, uh, put the show up on YouTube every day, the video version of it, the webcast version. And um, hopefully I'm going to be putting that on our uh, Facebook page. So the Tom Taylor, well, the Tom Taylor Sports Show Facebook page will have a link to the YouTube uh, event. So you can click on it and listen and watch there. So. There you go. And if you missed it earlier today, the new announcement coming out of, uh, come out of Bristol Motor Speedway. Uh, they're going to rename the race. They have renamed the race in honor of Steve Burns, who, again, is uh, – uh, having a tough battle with neck and head cancer. And so they have renamed the race for next uh, Sunday, they being Food City and Fox and Bristol Motor Speedway. And uh, that was uh, sent to us a little bit earlier before the show got started. We certainly thank uh, Drew and the folks at the Speedway about that. It is now going to be called, uh, starting next week, it's a one-time shot. It's going to be called, mm, let's see here. Uh, I had it, and then it got away from me. Here it is, Food City 500 in support of Steve Burns and Stand Up to Cancer. Again, he's battling head and neck cancer. So Food City, Fox Sports, and Bristol Motor Speedway showing their support by naming the uh, April 19th Spring Cup, uh, Spring Cup race at Bristol, the Food City 500 in support of Steve Burns and Stand Up to Cancer. And that's awesome. I think that is a very, very nice touch on behalf, again, of Steve Smith and, and uh, Jerry Caldwell and certainly the folks at Fox Sports. That's, again, nice touch. Quick break. We'll come right back. We'll see if we can track down our buddy Bob from Book Lovers Warehouse in Johnson City. Coming up here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. It's not just a race. It's the place. A place to set up a tent, park the RV, and start emptying the coop. A place to fire up the grill in the Tennessee Hills and take in the best short track racing in NASCAR. The place is the last great coliseum. Bristol Motor Speedway. Hope you'll join us on April 19th for the Food City 5. Call 423-BRISTOL or visit bristolticks.com. It's not just a place. It's Bristol, baby! At Farmers, we make you smarter about your insurance because what you don't know can hurt you. 
What if you didn't know to update your coverage when adult children move home? Oh, heck no. Or that you can get coverage for identity theft through your homeowner's insurance. And that your valuables can be covered by home insurance even when they're not at home. The more you know, the better you can plan for what's ahead. Talk to farmers and get smarter about your insurance. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at FCA.org. From the driveways where your kids play basketball and ride their bicycles to the parking lots at your local church or grocery store, Bracken Paving is an important part of many neighborhoods in our area. No matter how large or how small the job, Bracken strives for excellence in every service they provide. It's a foundation for a strong community. Discover the difference at Bracken Paving and Asphalt Maintenance. Give us a call or visit us online at BrackenPaving.com. And we're back with the Tom Taylor Sports Show again on this Friday. Again, one more time, they've renamed the Food City 500 in support of Steve Burns, a young man with Fox Sports Broadcaster who is battling head and neck cancer. So next Sunday's race will be the Food City 500 in support of Steve Burns and Stand Up to Cancer, which I think is a very, very classy touch by the folks at Food City and Bristol Motor Speedway. Let's go to the ponies there, our buddy Bob from Book Lovers Warehouse in Johnson City, one of our great sponsors next week on Bristol Live. Good afternoon, sir. How you doing? Listen, I'm I'm doing real good. This is uh, I love it when the weather gets a little warmer and not too warm, and this is a good time to go get a book. Absolutely. Let's talk about gardening. We're going to talk about some sports books here in just a second. But gardening, again, this is the time of year. Look outside. Spring has sprung. Everything's greened up, and either vegetable gardening or flower gardening or landscaping. A lot of books along those lines. Tell me about it. I've got probably three or 4,000 books on gardening, every type, container gardening, inside gardening, small gardens, vegetable gardening, uh, grow your own food. I mean, this is, this is a good store to come at. Instead of paying $30 in a big box store, you pay like three bucks. And if uh, it, it, it's just a, a, oh, I don't know. I just think if you're planning on doing some gardening, people think they know everything, but uh, I certainly don't. So I've, I've, I straightened them up last week, and I stood them up. They were laying down, and I, I was just amazed at the variety of gardening books. We just got a tremendous amount. So if, you, if you're thinking about doing something in, in landscaping, gardening, and stuff like that, uh, you want to build a pond, you want to do anything you want, this is a great store to come in because it's everything you'll ever need to know or want to know. We're talking again to our buddy Bob from Book Lovers Warehouse in Johnson City. We normally talk about NASCAR. Let's just talk about going back down to the sports section. you got all kinds of baseball books, football books, basketball books, lots and lots of sports books. Tell us about it. Oh, I, I've got, oh, I'd say about eight bookcases full of sports books. And, uh, and some of the things that people like are golf and uh, tennis and, oh, I don't know, uh, football, baseball. I've got some of the classic uh, biographies of baseball players and football players and uh, different teams. So uh, if you're a sports addict or if you know somebody is, this is a good store to come. And I tell you what, the quality of books in uh, a used bookstore has like tripled in quality in the last 10 years. Uh, stuff looks brand new. And Rather, like say, like you do in gardening, rather than spend twenty five, thirty, forty dollars for them, you can get a nice gardening or a nice sports book for two, three, four dollars, and it it's just one of those things that uh, if you love sports and you want to get into shape and start playing golf or anything, come on by and see what we got. Yeah, we're talking about golf because the obvious going on this weekend, the Masters down in Augusta, Georgia. So you got a good selection of. Uh, these are all used, but some good selection of uh, books on playing golf and also some biographies about some of the famous golfers, right? Oh, yeah. And some uh, I saw Arnold Palmer the other day. Boy, 
he's as old as I am. Actually, he's older. <laughs> so um, I understand uh, if, if you're a golfer, you'll find our golf section just amazing. But it's got all kinds of sports books in there. So come see what we got. And uh, if you're not pleased, I'll be surprised. Over 200,000 titles, 6,000 square feet. They're located between Johnson City and Jonesboro, right there at the Sonic Drive-In, right beside Harbor Freight Tools. And again, been very, very busy. Bob, talk about the trade policy. Again, that brings in, you say, well, I was down there Christmas shopping, or I was down there for Valentine's getting some stuff, or I was here, I was there, or I've been there. But uh, really and truly, the, the merchandise inventory changes almost on a daily and certainly a weekly basis because of the trade policy. Tell me about that. Well, the good stuff goes quick. I mean, the stuff that's most interesting, uh, if you see it and uh, you're thinking about buying it, go ahead and get it. Uh, if you happen to have another one at home, we'll, uh, we'll switch it out for you. But uh, uh, bring in your old books. Bring in something interesting. Bring in stuff on how to do things, uh, uh, some ancient history, some Civil War his- history, anything that you got that's very unusual. The best-selling books... The, the Daniel Steele and the, uh, and all the romance and mystery stories, there's a lot of them. But it, the ones that are really good are the ones that are unusual and stuff that you'll never see again. And that's the kind of stuff I try to keep. So you bring in a book, if we're going to sell for five, we'll give you half that on trade. And uh, that's how we get most of our stock. They're open seven days a week before I let you go. Again, uh, switch gears one more time. We were talking about sports, which, of course, is a sports show. But tell me about their albums. I know you sell a lot of albums. I ran into a guy last night at uh, gymnastics class and said he came down a rack and loaded up on albums that he found that you've got some albums nobody else. In fact, he found one he'd been looking for for two or three years, and you found or he had it at your, found it, I should say, because you had it there at your place. So talk for a second about the albums you have. Albums are one of my favorite sections because uh, most of the used bookstores have eliminated them, and they're just hard to find. Everybody's going to CDs. Uh, we do have a lot of CDs and a lot of movies on DVDs, but uh, uh, albums are, are great because they're great for gifts. Find out what your father or your mother or your uncle liked, or the, the, the band they liked. And I tell you, I was amazed because I had a young man who looked like he was like 18 he brought six albums up of big bands, and uh, big bands were from the 60s and 50s and 70s. So, uh, you know, we we got albums of her country, western, rock and roll, gospel, uh, oh, just an amazing amount of things. And most of the time on the front covers you'll find pictures that would be uh, suitable for framing, uh, and it, you'll find some real collectible stuff there, and I'm sure... Your uh, your uncle, your grandfather, your father would love to get an album, something they really liked back in the 60s and 70s. There you go, and he's open seven days a week. Again, he's located right beside Harbor Freight Tools in Johnson City, between John City and Jonesboro there on 11E. And tell us the hours you're open, my friend. We open 10 till 7, six days a week. On Sunday, we open at 12 and stay till 5. And we get to see your smiling face when? When are you in the store? I'm in there on Sundays. Uh, I'm in there on uh, Fridays. I'm in there on Tuesdays. There you go. And so we'll get a chance to see you a little bit later on today. Bob, great report, my friend. As we always tell you, sell, 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 and I'll talk to you in a little while, all right? Fair enough. Thanks. Yep, good man right there. He does a great job, runs a great bookstore. Our buddy Bob from Book Lovers Warehouse in Johnson City. And you heard about it right here on the Tom Taylor Sports Show. And so... Uh, we appreciate him very much. It uh, Let's see, time now to talk a little local baseball and softball. Here we go. Let's run down big baseball game yesterday, baseball day, I should say, with games yesterday. And it goes as follows. Science Hill all over Morristown West, 14-1. to 1. Uh, These are the scores we have. North beat Providence Academy, 12-7. to 7. Uh, Also yesterday, Eastside over Twin Springs in Virginia, 14 nothing in five innings. That's all in baseball. Also in uh, in softball, well, a lot of softball. Let's see if we can get the other baseball. Of course, we bounce between two papers. Sometimes one has some more than others, and we certainly appreciate both the Johnson City Press and the Kingsport Times News. Also, yep, here's some more. Yesterday, Crockett doubles up Sullivan East 10-5. to South Greenby Volunteer 4-3 to in baseball. Itacoy County blanking Daniel Boone 3-0 in baseball. The Chick-fil-A tournament at Happy Valley. Happy Valley beat Unica 10-8. Sullivan Central 
Doubles up Chucky Doak, 10 to 5 in baseball. The Chick fil A tournament in Elizabethan, North Green over Chucky Doak, 11 to 3. Elizabethan blanking North Green, 7 to nothing. All that is in baseball. Now in softball from yesterday, the Eastman tournament at Domtar Park. Whoo, me, oh my, look at all the teams played. Daniel Boomby, University High. Volunteer beat Union County. Science Hill defeats Granger. Sullivan Central's ladies beat Chucky Doak. Unicoi County defeated Crockett. Dobbins Minute beat Cherokee. Science Hill beat University High. Greenbrier defeated Volunteer. Cherokee's ladies over Sullivan Central. Crockett's ladies beat University High. Chucky Doak's ladies knock off Dobbins Minute. Uh, let's see. Southwest Virginia. Y Central beat Virginia High. And J.I. Burton over Rye Cove and Girls High School Softball. And let's make sure we reference the other paper. Make sure we got them all. Unicoi County, Daniel Boone played a 5-5 tie, was suspended because of lightning from yesterday. And Elizabeth beat Sullivan South 7-3. That one called in five innings because also lightning there in Elizabeth. And so today, here we go, Domtar Park. You have these teams playing coming up here in just a few minutes. Cookville and Sullivan Central, volunteer at Sullivan South at 3 o'clock. Uh, that's at Domtar Park. At Ridgefield Elementary in Gray, Greenville, Tennessee High, Carnes and Greenbrier, University Heights and Granger and Union City, I'm sorry, Union County and Oak Ridge. All that at Ridgeview Elementary in Gray. Uh, a little bit later on this afternoon, Domtar Park in Kingsport, Walker Valley Volunteer, University High William Blunt, Richlands and Cookville at Ridgeview Elementary in Gray at 430, Greenbrier, Happy Valley. A lot of ball games. Yeah, Oak Ridge and Aka, Crockett University Heights. and Friday, Uni- baby. You got it. Unicoi <laughs> County and Tennessee High. All that's at Ridgeview Elementary at 430. At 6 o'clock tonight, you have Johnson County and Morristown East, South and Knox Catholic, Dobbins Minute and Knox Central, and Richlands and Sullivan Central. Those are all being played at Domtar Park and Kingsport at 6. Uh, at 6 in gray, there's two sides, obviously, for this tournament. Science Hill, Perry Central. I would think hotel rooms be a premium with the wrestling in town, 600 kids, 26 teams, and now a lot of these teams in the softball tournament out of town. I say they be, they're going to be pretty full. Whew, man, there's a lot of out of town teams staying for the weekend in the softball tournament. In gray, at uh, as we said, at six o'clock, Science Hill, Perry Central, Morristown, West Boone, Hampton, Greenville, Granger, South Doyle, and it goes on. and And they play some more games at seven thirty, and more games at nine o'clock tonight. At seven thirty in Kingsport, Cherokee Knox Catholic, Dobbins Minute Cookville, Morristown East Knox Powell, John Battle Knox Central. Seven thirty in gray. Union County and Daniel Boone, Unicoi County, Knox Halls. Woo, that's going to be a dandy. That is going to be a barn burner right there. That's at 7.30 tonight in gray. Unicoi County and Knox Halls. North and Crockett and Knox Carnes and Science Hill. And then the final round you have at 9 o'clock at Domtar Park. You have Cherokee, Walker Valley, Knox Powell, Johnson County, uh, William Blunt, Greenbrier, and John Battle, University High. Then finally tonight in gray at 9 o'clock, Perry Central, Happy Valley, Unica, Morristown West, Knox Halls and Hampton, and South Doyle and the Sullivan North Lady Golden Raiders. So a lot of this, I want to get every team in because it's important to name them all because they're all out there working hard to play in the Eastman Tournament being played at Domtar Park in Kingsport and also at Ridgeview Elementary School in Gray. Whoo, that's a lot of <laughs> softball. A lot of softball. So uh, let's say soccer today. Big one coming up. Later on tonight, Dobbins Minute at Sullivan South in boys' soccer. A little backyard tussle. And then also tomorrow, you've got the Frank Carver Invitational Track Meet going on tomorrow at Tennessee High. So we've got stuff going all over the place. Baseball, softball. We've got, as we said, the uh, soccer. Uh, we've got the uh, wrestling tournament going on at, at uh, the Buck Van House Dome at Dobbins Minute, bringing in 600 little people ages Kindergarten through fifth grade from all over the country, 26 teams, 12 states. The softball tournament in town with teams from all over south, actually from all over uh, Tennessee, coming in for the tournament this weekend for that softball tournament, the Eastman tournament. So a lot of -of out-of-town folks putting a lot of money in the old uh, coffers for the old taxes, and that's a good thing. So, whoo. There you go. Wow. What else going on in sports? (laughs) Well, you got the Major League Baseball. Yeah. You got that going on today. You got the first pitch of the day will be Toronto at Baltimore. 305. Uh, 405, you got Houston uh, uh, down at Texas. Uh, Chicago will be at Colorado. 
Washington at Philadelphia, Detroit at Cleveland, St. Louis at Cincinnati. Yeah. And by the way, uh, Cincinnati's taken the last three games in Cincinnati. That's what you know that. Really? Yes, they have. <laughs> Probably wasn't a smart bet then, was it? <laughs> no wonder you're now, cackling. Now, now, yes, you know, St. Louis has taken 12 out of 19, yeah. the other 19 games. But yeah. Cincinnati's la won the last three at Cincinnati. Really? Yes. So, just want to let you know that. <laughs> Can we change the bet? No, no. Minnesota's <laughs> at Chicago. Tampa Bay's at Miami. Boston at New York. New York, uh, the Yankees, of course. The Mets uh, will be at Atlanta. Uh, that's going to be the first test for Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they didn't play anybody at first. Nah, the Marlins. <laughs> Saw a guy last night. Man, the Braves went three and zero. I said, "It's the Marlins." They're still three and zero. I said, "It's the Marlins." Come on. <laughs> oh, mercy! Then out on the West Coast, you got Kansas City at Los Angeles. This year, Pittsburgh's going to be at uh, Milwaukee, Seattle, and Oakland. Los Angeles at Arizona, and ending up uh, the day, San Francisco at San Diego. There you go. We are about to pick a winner for the tickets. Uh, Horace will stick his big gnarly hand down in the bucket and pull out a winner. Yesterday okay. we got Jeremiah Clark. While he's doing that, let me tell you about the good folks from you – know, i got to tell you about the good folks from Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics. 39 years, four locations, one family, Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics, 1-800-524-4447. They'll be with us on Bristol Live next week. Will Gray building a great staff again at Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics. Four locations in Kingsport on Broad Street, in Bristol, Highway 126, near Still Creek Park, in Greenville on Justice Drive, and Founding Mill, Virginia, on Short Street. They also have offered clinics in Virginia at Abington, Withville, Lebanon, Norton, in Tennessee. They've offered clinics, or clinics offered in Sevierville, in Mountain City, and clinics offered by Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics in Newell, North Carolina, and Linville, North Carolina. 39 years, four locations. One family, and they move the folks in and out, and they do a great job taking care of folks, again, with uh, orthotics and diabetics and prosthetic needs. They can help you, and they do it from, if you need to brace it or replace it from head to toe, you know where to go. Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics, and you do, at 1-800-524-4447 is the number to call. So, there you go. Who did you pick? Reach, reach down in the bucket and pick for a winner. We have got Lisa Harris from Jonesboro, Tennessee. Lisa Harris. All right. Lisa Harris. Way to go. Lisa Harris from Jonesboro, Tennessee has won. All right. And we'll get in touch with Lisa. Let me put over in our ticket winner list. And Lisa Harris from Jonesboro, Tennessee. Ladies doing good on this. They have. Yes, they have. So let's run them down for you. Ken Archer from Limestone. Denise Odessa from Kingsport, Britt Marshall from Churchill. You have Sarah Noel from Nashville, Brian Sharp from Gray, Roy Settle from Johnson City, Jeremiah Clark from uh, Kingsport, and Lisa Harris now wins it from Jonesboro. How yes, about that? So going racing. Now, we're going to give away one more set of tickets on Monday. One more time, what must we do to get our name in the bucket? You need to go and send an email to the Tom Taylor, well, Tom Taylor Sports Show, sorry about that, <laughs> yeah. at gmail.com, and send us your name, address, uh, contact information, and we'll put your name in the hat, and hopefully that's uh, you'll get uh, your name pulled out next Monday, and you'll be going to the big dance there. There you go. Having a big, big time next Saturday. Again, as we said, 425 laps of racing next Saturday. The drive to stop diabetes 300 and the pit light 125 but one must do that and uh, get yourself in the bucket to make that happen and again we congratulate lisa harris out of jonesboro she wins today again all she did was go to the tom taylor sports show at gmail.com and she entered with the pertinent information and she won tickets to go to the racing next weekend all right so there you go anything else Mo no more check on the masters nothing's uh, changed let's take it one more check hang on yeah, here a nothing's second. changed the last 20 minutes tom okay well, i just, <laughs> run, just trying to. oh yes it has ah. charlie hoffman's gained another stroke uh he's now only four back of uh, jordan spieth speech still leads uh after playing 17 uh 14 under charlie hoffman is 10 under ernie ells of course finished at five under for the round today paul casey's still on the course he's at four under uh, da, 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 da. Angel Cabrera, three under. The other notables, you've got um, Phil Mickelson at uh, minus two. He's even. He's only been on his third hole, though. 
Uh, whoops, what did I do there? I didn't mean to do that. Go back. <laughs> <laughs> click, click, click. Uh, Tiger Woods still minus two after 15. So he hasn't gained. He's had a good day. He's played uh, well, uh, three under for the day. So he's at minus two. Um, where'd Bubba Watson go? I don't know. Roy McIlroy, he's on the third hole. Uh, he, he's even for the day, still at minus one. So if you had to stop right now and say, I'm going to pick a winner out of what you've just read, the folks, who would you go with? I tell you what, I, I th you know, you still got two more rounds to play. Um, Hoffman's only on the 14th hole uh, in today's round. He's gaining gaining a little bit on speed. So you got a two-man race right now. Uh, they're 10, 10 strokes ahead of everybody else. Uh, well, at least Spieth is, but um, uh, so Hoffman and Spieth seem to be the, the cream of the crop right now. Um, I had to put my money on one of those two. All right, uh, there you go. They won't do it. They'll falter. So give me a guy about 10 down. Who's somebody right now about 10th in the pack? Garcia? 10th down? Somewhere down through the pack that's not in the top two, three, four, five right now. Uh, Phil Mickelson, he's tied for 11th. Let's there you see go. Here. But, yeah, he's, He'll come on strong. They're all 14 strokes back. And so. thoroughbreds will come into the the head I, of the I still don't think Tiger's going to – I think he may have a good round today, but I think he's going to choke tomorrow. I just got a <laughs> gut feeling. Now, I'll tell you who's disappointed me, and that's Rory McIlroy. Yeah, yeah. He's only he's only uh, uh, one under for the for the tournament so far. Of course, he's only on the third hole in the second round. But he's he needs to uh, pick it up uh, if he's going to gain some steam and have a chance there on Sunday. There you go. All righty, our ninth week is in the books. Coming up on Monday, we'll hear from the NASCAR drivers and see what happens again tonight. For the Xfinity, O'Reilly Auto Parts 350. And, of course, tomorrow night, the Duck Commander 500. And getting ready for woohoo! next week will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday here. We will step aside next Thursday and Friday for the Tom Taylor Sports Show. And we will be live at Bristol Motor Speedway with the Bristol Live programming. We'll tell you how you can listen to that next week. So we'll be uh, shutting this down for only two days on Thursday and Friday then pick back up uh, the following week. But we will be here on Monday for sure. Today's show brought to you by Bracken Asphalt Maintenance and Bracken Paving, Wells Fargo Financial Network, Bays Mountain Park, Max Medicine Mart, Kingsport Cabinetry, Cherokee Barbershop, Bristol Motor Speedway, American Import and Auto Repair, Jim Klein Farmers Insurance, Book Lovers Warehouse, Bristol Orthotics and Prosthetics, and by Larry Kaiser, Nationwide Insurance. And again, the thought for the day as we're leaving here, hit the music, for, uh, horse. I almost said force. <laughs> Uh, about the same. Do not let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do. There you go. For a horse, again, thank you. Nine weeks in the books. We can't thank you enough. We're growing by leaps and bounds every day. And thank you, thank you, thank you. And we dedicate this show, as we always do, to the man hung on the cross, the Lord Jesus. And it's his show, and the growth is his. It'll grow as fast as he wants it to. See you Monday. Have a great weekend again. Thanks for being with us. And remember, win or lose, be a good sport. Thanks for watching listening to the Tom Taylor Sports Show.